In a world where nostalgia rages across the land, where everyone and their mother has a podcast, where there's still a movie trailer guy who says, in a world, three friends revisit films, shows, and games that molded them as they search for answers to life, the universe, and everything in between. Settle in and join us for Screen Refresh. Welcome back to Screen Refresh, a show where we revisit the films, shows, and games from our childhood to try to take another look at what we fell in love with. As always, I'm Tom Tom, and I'm joined by the rest of the Screen Refresh crew, Nick and Dean. That's not my name. <laughs> That's not my name. <laughs> I was trying to think of like a line from the movie. You can't give yourself a ninja name and then call us our normal names. Yeah, they're given to you, by the way. I mean, okay, fine. Are we going to give each other ninja names? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I just wanted to call it somebody Tum Tum, and I figured I'd just call myself <laughs> Tum Tum. Oh, without offending. Like, because I know I'm going to be like, and joined by our friends Nick and Tum Tum. You're going to be like, what? Oh, I'm the fat one, huh? <laughs> Rocky. I do love jelly beans. <laughs> oh, hello, by the way. Hello. Hello there. <laughs> so, do you guys know what movie we're covering today, seeing as we've had a lot of Tum Tum talk for the first three minutes of this episode? Well, I quoted the movie. Yeah. T Nick quoted it, and I'm like, oh, okay. And I realized I didn't watch the right one. <laughs> you watched watch watch Steve McQueen? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I watched Bullet. <laughs> <laughs> about 20 minutes in, it's just about cars. Like, where's the ninjas? <laughs> I mean... They come in later, third act? Ninjas in this film are very... In there must have been a, a variant of ninja that I was not aware of. Um, at some point during all of this, seen as they all carried like machine guns and goggles. Yeah, I think at one point they crossed paths with Colonel Chi and he trained them a bit in how to storm a castle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I know we make the jokes all the time about the, the villain randomly taking out a snub nose, but I feel like <laughs> this is the first time that it actually makes sense. Yeah. There were a few hearty laughs involving guns. This he reminded me almost like an alternate version of a Rokusaki. Instead I call of being leisure like, suit shredder. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing missing was his That's origin good. story, getting the scar on his face. But he reminded me of like um, if you took Steven Seagal and Justin Theroux and put them in the <laughs> the Brundle Fly telepods. Now that you mention it, Nick, um, I did realize several parallels to the Ninja Turtles and that just I, I can't believe I didn't see the splinter shredder parallel in this movie as well like oh yeah that makes total sense I mean if anything watching this I feel like they are were better trained than the turtles with all the I think it's maybe because we're given a montage of them training in this and the turtles are just you know they trained it's fine you don't have to watch them do all these exercises right yeah those Mary Sue turtles yeah. <laughs> the raw natural talent of those turtles. God, I love being a turtle! So, for anybody that might not know any idea what we're covering, uh, Three Ninjas. So, August 7th, 1992, Three Ninjas grossed $29,028,000. It was the 44th highest grossing domestically in 1992 and the 330th highest grosser overall for Disney as a company. Disney made this? They yep. they acquired it, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't like the producers. I don't think it was like an in-house production no, deal. Because I have notes on that on things they weren't they weren't happy with parts of the movie when once they bought it. Like the whole to, to keep ninja it, segment? to keep it PG. <laughs> yeah, the whole the whole fighting, the whole weapons, the whole Guys, we love attempted all this. murder. We gotta take out those ninjas. <laughs> We love everything about the Ninja Turtles, except the fighting and the ninjas. And the turtles. Wait, you still made that movie with the fighting. What did we say? <laughs> what did we just say? Okay, we'll green light a second one, but don't <laughs> fool us again. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, we'll green light a third one, but... So one more time, this one was, more time. <laughs> this was released against Raising Kane, John Lithgow, uh, Whispers in the Dark, with Anthony LaPaglia, and uh, Unforgiven, Clint Eastwood's film. Uh, so it didn't have a lot of direct competition during this time frame. Are you sure? Well, as an eight-year-old, clearly I went to go see 
the Unforgiven instead of Three Ninjas. Yeah, that's what I would have chosen. Well, I was waiting for later in August 1992 for my three-year-old self to go watch a Single White Female, Honeymoon in Vegas, and Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. Oh, did that come out too? I saw that um, Peter Jackson's Dead Alive, a.k.a. Brain Dead, everywhere else in the world, came out, eh. but I didn't know what kind of... Uh... Oh, don't do that to me. I love that movie. <laughs> I know you love that movie. <laughs> it's just, it's... I always want to love it a lot I more than I do. I kick ass for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only parts I like of that movie is you quoting parts of that movie. Because every time I sit down to try to give it another shot, I'm like, I don't know if I could do this. Like, oh. I like splat stick stuff, but for some reason it just doesn't click with me. Oh man, you don't like zombies? I love zombies. Having sex with each other? Oh, maybe not that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I like I liked Return of the Living Dead Part 3. <laughs> yeah, hey, this has zombie sex, and uh, I'm pretty sure the church has problems of procreation <laughs> if they did it their normal way or through sex. Hopefully it's protected. <laughs> Protecting zombie sex. So, yeah, 1992. I, it, A powerhouse of cinema. <laughs> but sitting down and looking at all the movies that got released, it's just always interesting to me to be like, oh, yeah, like, Seven movies that I immediately recognize all came out within the same month. And it seems to be like every time we look at it, it's, oh, yeah, like there's seven ones that I still watch now. Maybe not so much this month. Yeah, Last of the, Mo Last of the Mohicans. I've never seen Last of the Mohicans. That came out as well in August. That came out this month? Yeah. Well, the this movie's month? Yeah. Just yeah. now. <laughs> it came, 20 came out ago. this month. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's New there. to HBO Max. Unless the movie whatever.com was incorrect but they had all the other movies you were talking about too oh you think people so. would do that go on the internet and just lie yeah well that's yeah. what they save imdb trivia for <laughs> hey i want to quote some of that it better not be lies. <laughs> <laughs> after Surfing that whole just thing, has me gun shy on it now yeah i have like tr like i have like ptsd whenever i look at the trivia now like is that really true i don't think so so I think it should just be a standing thing. If anybody listens to this and knows correct trivia, or if anybody worked on the movie that realized, wait a second, IMDb is not right. Let us know. Set the record straight. So you're telling the internet to tell us the second we're wrong about something? Yes. Open <laughs> season. Nobody will ever do that. <laughs> um. So, yeah, Three Ninjas. Who, who picked this movie? Dean, was that you? That was me, completing the Ninja Trilogy of Ninja Turtles, Surf Ninjas, and this Ninja movie. And we'll never... I mean, there were Ninja we'll, in Mortal Kombat. We'll never discuss another Ninja movie after this. What if it's kind of Ninja adjacent? Can we do sidekicks with Chuck Norris and Joe Piscopo? Yeah, as long as it doesn't say Ninja in the title, that's really the only criteria. It could be only What about nin only Ninja ninjas. 3 The Dominion? Yeah, no, because that's... No, did you hear what I said? So we can uh. never cover, <laughs> can never cover Franco Nero Ninja. Unfortunately, I've I've sealed it off unofficially. Um, we can't even cover the first Turtles movie. I mean, I'm really taking this to the extreme. <laughs> There's a moratorium on ninjas now. <laughs> yeah, let's let's get into Three Ninjas then. Dean, I have to say, I never saw this movie. I had zero interest in this movie, and then I was traveling for work this week and decided. We're going to record this in like a day and a half. I need to sit down and watch this thing. And I laughed out loud throughout this movie. Yeah, this has, it's, I mean, we'll get into it, but the three, I call them the three stooges. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Oh, they, I referred to them as the surfers three. The surfers like the, three. Uh, was it the warriors four or whatever it is in uh, <laughs> Thor? <laughs> they provide like pretty genuine, like comedic relief throughout this. Um and I think they, like, looking back at it now, like, subjectively, like, that is the most enjoyable part to me, is those guys' pieces of the movie. Although, overall, I think it was a pretty well-made uh, kids' movie. I think it definitely took up on the uh, Turtles train. And, like, it's kind of like what those kids, fans of Ninja Turtles and just little boys like we're like yes that, i want to be this like this is what i pretend i'm being like this is what me and my friends how we play and then he's like living out there's every boy's like fantasy on screen like beating up dudes and like saving the day 
I like the masks and stuff too, and just the whole concept of them like getting dressed up besides wearing the gis and yeah. um not having to use weapons I actually kind of liked because it made a lot more sense because i mean even watching all this stuff as a kid like they stripped the weapons from the power rangers the turtles eventually stopped being able to use any of their weapons so the fact that it's just like you see them training with it in the beginning but then later on in the movie it's just that's not even their whole shtick i actually appreciate it a bit more yeah, that it's like it's not their go-to. It's just part of their repertoire. Yeah. And Tum Tum kept that snub nose revolver in his boot. <laughs> we'll get to him. Um, I guess before we get into it, though I learned this from IMDb, but this seems legit, <laughs> that there are, I guess, the theatrical movie that we may have seen and video release especially were like really cut down as far as some of the fighting scenes. And reading the list of stuff that they had said were cut, I saw all those scenes. So I definitely watched a version of the movie that had things put back in. So I don't know if you, yeah. I'm, I'd be curious to see if you guys found the same one. Yeah, because I, um, I ended up buying it on um, Prime. And when I watched it, like I, I did the same thing. I checked the trivia that you mentioned and they were like, oh, in the international cut, they lose the basketball game and then there's yeah. a scene at the end of the movie where it ties together and I was like, wait a second, that was the one I watched. So I assume that's the international. Okay. Yeah, so they just put it back as it used to be then. Yeah. I so watched the VHS if cut. You, you watched the VHS cut? Did you really? No. Okay. I, don't have, I have the movie, but I don't <laughs> I don't have a VHS player. It's like well, I was like wondering if we would have a slightly different experience. Like we get to one scene, I'm like, they didn't, they didn't lose the basketball scene. <laughs> like clue, like, like the different endings. Silver bullet all over again. <laughs> yeah, you know that part where Grandpa takes that guy's head off at the train tracks. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, okay, I just wanted to clear that up. I wasn't sure uh, if you guys had seen a different version or something. I didn't know what they did since uh, the 90s releases. I did watch this last month so i don't remember anything standing out with the cut that i watched if it was different so i honestly don't remember we'll see or you'll just won't remember and you'll be like oh okay you'll go along with it <laughs> nothing truly stood out and even looking over my notes there wasn't anything that i said that was like i don't remember this because this was one of those movies just like ace ventura um like Jurassic Park, like I wore the tape out growing up. Like I watched. Oh this yeah, you probably seen it way more times, than I yeah. have. Probably, and that's the last time I saw it too. Was like years and years ago. So when I rewatched it, it was really cool to see how some of it still kind of held up. And you're right, the whole the Surfers three really did carry the movie for me as adult Nick, versus just being more the fantasy but, of being a cool ninja. Yeah, I mean, ninja that kid. fantasy's still there. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, we'd still aspire to be ninjas, of course. Yeah, I could take those kids. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did you see <laughs> See what they were doing? Um, I thought it was cool how just generally, like, I, I think I noticed one part in the beginning where they were training, I think, somebody doing a somersault. I was like, oh, that's a that's a stunt double. It's not one of the kids. But for the rest of it, I'm like, I feel like the kids did like all of the choreography and like, I thought that was pretty cool. I'd, I'd be hard to stunt double, I guess, a kid <laughs> depending on, <laughs> you know, but um, it's cool to see them like, oh, they're doing all of these moves on screen and there wasn't like close up cuts as much as like there was with the grandpa. <laughs> it was more obvious that grandpa wasn't doing a lot of his Tum Tum does but... a jump kick and all of a sudden you just see a quick cut a of him like six feet tall with like a <laughs> plastic mask on. <laughs> like a beard although there were a couple points where victor wong does like a a dive or something and you can tell what because it's facing away from the camera that it's just somebody with a wig yeah yeah the, I mean, he's the more obvious like but it, it was never anything that like pulled me from the movie it was just like oh hey i notice it i noticed it at the beginning of the movie then i'm like yeah that's to be expected he's you know he's not moving too fast not as fast yeah. as he used to be able to but uh, just something overall I noticed that was cool about the production of the movie. So, speaking of the production of the movie, uh, directed by John Turtletop, the director of Cool Runnings, the Nicolas Cage hit National Treasure 1 and 2, and Sorcerer's Apprentice, 
and the John Travolta film Phenomenon. Don't forget the uh, most recent classic of Dean's favorites list, The Meg. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say while you were sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I his name looked familiar when I clicked on it on IMDb and looked at his uh, list of credits. And I was like, oh, he had a, you know, a pretty decent career, which seems to still be going on. Yeah, which I don't know if he's involved with the, I think they're doing a sequel to The Meg. But I don't know if that's going to be somebody different. Yeah, that doesn't seem like it's one of those movies you like need the original director for. Not, yeah. I mean, w- with the Meg, it's like, you know, he's working with what he was given as far as the script. So it was like an yeah, okay I, I movie. Yeah, I doubt the, the Meg was like a passion project <laughs> he had been yeah. shopping around for right. years. I'd watch the sequel. Jaws, but bigger. But... <laughs> so... Cast-wise, I know we mentioned Victor Wong as Grandpa, which from one of my favorite films of all time, which we'll eventually cover, Egg Shen in Big Trouble Little China. Yeah. Yeah, that was the one that I remembered after I saw him again in this. I'm like, oh yeah, that's he's in Big Trouble. And a couple the, other bigger movies that I haven't seen, but I'm very much aware of. Well, the other one that I always think of him in is um, as the professor in Prince of Darkness, the John Carpenter movie. Um, and also I always forget that he's in Tremors, the first one. Yeah. But I guess like compared to Tremors, his other big movie is the Joy Luck Club. And the Last Emperor by Bertolucci as well. I don't know how big of a party he has in that, but it's no Tremors. <laughs> I, I only know him as, as grandpa from this and that's it. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that's... seeing big trouble in little China for the first time. It's just like, that's grandpa. <laughs> Whenever he came up on on screen, it's a coach from Major League. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't honestly know any other actors throughout this whole movie besides just him. I think yeah, I just knew Victor Wong. Yeah, I think yeah, he's he's pretty much well. It. Actually, the him and um the one of the henchmen um I forgot his I think it was like Rushmore or something. Uh, Professor Toru Tanaka. That he was in, he was Sub Zero in The Running Man. He was in Last Action Hero. He was in um, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. He was in Dead Heat with Joe Piscopo that we mentioned earlier. Is this the but, muscle Japanese guy? Yeah, like the the big the big guy henchman. Yeah, that the oh, three of them yeah. fight at the end. But yeah, he when I saw him, I was like, oh, I remember him. I think I just always remember him specifically from Running Man. Ah, uh, well, he's to Nick and I. He's this is his movie. <laughs> Sub Zero now, Plane Zero. <laughs> So, yeah, our, our three kids, Rocky, Colton, Tum Tum, um, Michael Trainer, Max Elliott Slade, and Chad Power, respectively, all came back for the sequel, Three Ninjas Knuckle Up. I know Max Elliott Slade, who played Colt, came back for the, the one after that, Three Ninjas Kicked Back, but it, it, I don't believe any of them came back for, uh, was it Showdown at Mega Mountain? High Noon. High Noon. Yeah. High Noon at Mega Mountain. Um but Colt was also in the movie and show for Parenthood, and he was in Apollo 13. Uh, but other than that, I, I don't know too, too much overall. I, I liked all three of them in this. I think they were great. They were. The chemistry I, was there. Yeah. It really helped. Yeah, that opening. Like I, um, well, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, like, I'm not a precocious kid fan in movies. It's the easiest way to get me to just kind of, like, lose interest. But, I mean, the same when we were talking about back, like, Surf Ninjas, or when we were talking about Little Monsters, it seems like the early 90s just captured kids with charisma that ended up just making characters work for me. And I don't know if that was just nostalgia doing that, or if it was just something fun about that timeline. I just looked up the word precocious because I really didn't know what it meant. And now I get what you said just now. (laughs) At least you're honest. (laughs) The more you know... So, adjective of a child having developed certain abilities or proclivities at an earlier age than usual. That bothers you in movies? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just always hate when it's like you have, oh, this kid is like six, but he's like wise beyond his years. And it's like, oh, and he's like showing up adults. I'm like, yeah, yeah we get it. Yeah, these kids check. are beating up a uh, 20-year-old, 25-year-old, 30-year-old dude. Yeah, yeah those, like, I, I don't know why. In, Mary Sue actors. <laughs> I don't know why in this movie, like, it doesn't bother me. And I know I'm mentioned it even back when we were doing surf ninjas that um while uh nick owen's character the the younger brother it was like oh yeah like he has to have the game gear because 
who's going to believe the tiny kid beating up a guy? And then I watch this and it's three tiny kids beating up guys. And I'm like, yeah, I can take this. <laughs> so they should have done it in Surf Ninjas too. Kids beat up everything. I'll watch it. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, well, this came out before Surf Ninjas, uh, but they were probably made, you know, that was Surf Ninjas would probably be made around this, uh, before this released. I like so. to think of them as a shared universe. Yeah. That would be a crossover I would have watched back then. I just don't... I mean, this deals heavily with the FBI and investigations, and I'm like, where's Tone, where's Tone Loke? Why didn't he show up here? <laughs> Miami at this point, probably. <laughs> this is not the time, Mace. If I don't want to come down here and see me talking to you or your ass, I'm history. At the end of the movie, the father's like, now that we got Snyder, we move on to the big guy, and it shows Rob Schneider up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> with his orange hair. <laughs> so... Yeah, you wanna you wanna get into this thing? Oh, I also want to say I met Max Elliot Slade Colt. Um, I live out in LA and do some work in film and TV, etc. Um, somebody I knew was doing a short film, and Max Elliot Slade was in it. So I didn't I didn't have the balls to just go talk to him about like, hey, so what was it like to be in Three Ninjas? <laughs> he just jump kicks you. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me with nunchucks that he carries in his back, uh, back pocket. Um, <laughs> in his back? <laughs> it's some sort of Giver villain. Um, I imagine but, like Robocop, just like the, his, the, <laughs> you know, the, the small of his back just opens up and there's a socket with like two nunchucks. <laughs> Dead or alive, you're getting grotted. I should have tried to get Max to join us for this. Um, he's definitely the... I think he's the coolest ninja of the bunch, but that's it's not all. brown nosing, right? <laughs> Trying to get him. Well, I, Please I come have it on in my notes show. a couple times that it's like Colt is just ready to tear things apart the entire movie, and it's just so many scenes where it's Colt's <laughs> rare and ready to go. It's just let him off the chain, <laughs> right? He's there, Raphael. There is there is a lot of times where you could see like, oh, you're definitely Leo, you're definitely Raph, you're definitely Mikey. There was no Donnie, really, but you can see the resemblance between them a lot. And sometimes I kind of felt like I like the kids a bit more than the turtles because it just, I don't know, they're given more real life situations they can react to instead of just constantly like, oh, I'm a turtle. I got to hide and always got to follow <laughs> the splinter as they do. Yeah, although they did have the uh, tin can phone thing set up between the houses and whatnot. So maybe they all had a little Donnie in them. I always wondered if that worked. To this day, I actually don't know if that works. I want to say it doesn't, but with just how often it's used, and it always works. Well, makes to my wonder. knowledge, the string has to be tight for vibrations. Yeah. So if they don't have that, then I have no idea how the sound's going, unless they're yeah. just like holding it up to their mouth and then screaming. <laughs> <laughs> he opens the window she's the next house over just yelling at her this works right um, still better than AT&T <laughs> there goes that sponsorship um, yeah so three ninjas so the movie opens with a voiceover which we don't ever get again but of the uh, brothers just kind of dropping exposition and also setting up their brotherly relationship, which isn't too, they don't rib on each other too much. Like they, they have some kind of brotherly disputes, but they're not like, I feel like re most brothers, like three brothers in the house is probably like lots of shit talking going on, but it did end up being a Disney movie. So I guess you can't get too much of that, but they set up their, relationship by just kind of like talking over each other and correcting each other in this opening while they're dropping Which, uh, knowledge over the yeah like normally i hate exposition with the whole like just tell don't show kind of deal which nick and i we, we've been talking about this in general but for some reason this here works for me where last summer looked like another great summer with our grandfather me and my brothers my brothers and i whatever we spent most of our time training to be ninja masters at our grandpa's cabin. Yeah, most kids are at some stupid camp. My two younger brothers and I studied with our Japanese grandfather. Most mornings began the same way. He'd wake us up with a different test, which I was always ready for. 
So was I. So was I. Yeah, yeah right. right. It's not any exposition that it's like you need to show us. It's okay. They're setting up not to tell us the plot line. They're setting it up more to get us introduced to how these three brothers interact with the way they're doing that exposition. So it it serves a purpose while also adding some personality to it, which is kind of the fun. only this is the only narrative I've ever seen too, where there's more than one person talking. Yeah. And I did like that a lot. And it really adds to what you're trying to say in that having them argue even in the narrative shows what their relationship is like. Yeah. So it's not just there to be, Hey, we're going to drop some exposition. It's we're using the exposition, but also as a way to get our characters across which would have been much different if they just decided to do this narration opening with like one single person that wasn't any of the brothers. It was like Keith David. Oh, I wouldn't be opposed to that. He can actually that he can be in any cool. movie and that'd be fine. <laughs> the only thing I would have been disappointed. It's like, wait, so he's not in this? <laughs> there were once three boys became ninjas. That was more Danny Glover than. <laughs> 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 Sorry, it was. It was very Murtaugh. <laughs> Oh, wait, what's Murtaugh? Which character? Lethal Weapon. Okay, yeah, right, it, right, 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 right. <laughs> Too old for this shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they're, they do exposition narration over at their grandpa's like little outside of LA area retreat. <laughs> His uh, San Bernardino ninja school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for boys. Um, <laughs> for wayward boys. <laughs> for wayward boys. <laughs> <laughs> San Bernardino Ninja School for Wayward Boys. I want that T-shirt. I can make that. Let's let's get it printed. Um, yeah. So, Grandpa, graphic artists, get at us. <laughs> Nick Cowan, are you are you busy? Um, <laughs> Grandpa wakes them up, I guess, every morning with a special test, and this time he's tickling them with a long piece of grass. And one by one, Colt grabs it, uh, and then Rocky grabs it. And he tries to get Tum Tum up, but it doesn't work until he pokes at his prized jelly beans and then Tum Tum wakes up. It's kind of like pretty much right away sets up Tum Tum's whole character. <laughs> Although, what are their names? Uh, it's like Sam. He's Michael Tum Tum. I forget Colt's name. Yeah, I, I didn't write. The only one I know is Tum Tum's name is Michael because when I find out that their last name is Douglas, I'm like, wait, Tum Tum is Michael Douglas? <laughs> <laughs> I never even yeah, thought of that. I, uh, I'm a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Young Michael Douglas as Tom Tom. The the narration's still going there, I think, after they wake up and they're like at one point somebody's like With all our ninja training, we thought we were ready to be ninjas. Well it's a good thing that we were, because that was a summer that we would never forget. I just immediately think like, what did you see the lifeguard's boobs? Like what, what? <laughs> What, Wendy what? Peppercorn. <laughs> Wendy Peppercorn, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It made me think of the Sandlot. Like, we saw porn for the first time. <laughs> you little pervert. That was one of my big summers. Uh, Mom and Dad Which, don't I like to this. this, like, Jackie Chan drunken master style training montage they have going on. Yeah. Of them, like, carrying things of water and doing all the acrobatics. And I had like, a laugh because <laughs> they do a kid. close up of them training with weapons and only weapons they really showed were the same ones used by the turtles. Yeah, I thought yeah. Colt is the coolest for sure at the beginning because he's using nunchucks and Mikey's my favorite. So I was like, yep, Colt's my guy. Colt's my wayward boy. <laughs> the size that Raphael uses, aren't they really like not even popular because they're really meant to destroy other swords and it's just the turtles that really popularized them? Yeah, I noticed I that, that every Psy I ever saw outside of the Turtles movie don't look like his. Like, his have leather wound around the two shorter points of the Psy. So, I think they're more functional as, instead of, not for stab, I mean, I don't know what Psy, I guess he'd stab maybe, but, like, his seemed more functional to be, like, defensive and disarming. Yeah, like you're saying. I don't really know about weapons, but I, I take your word for it. Yeah, like, I, I don't know the specifics. I think the intent is to be able to twist to yeah. uh, turn away the blade and break by catching it. it in there. An anti-sword weapon. And yeah. kick him in the face. 
get them get them distracted and kick them then in the nuts. Tum Tum's natural weapon is uh, what his jelly beans, or yeah. later how he creates some sort of pepper bomb, an explosive diarrhea elixir, <laughs> elixir, <laughs> snake coil, like an like an al- <laughs> like an alchemist. You say he's like an an eighteen hundreds like traveling like snake oil salesman. <laughs> This fine elixir. <laughs> Clear your bowels in one instant. <laughs> <laughs> and I like it, liked how um, at one point they show them doing blindfolded bow staff training. Yeah, like they're at an advanced level here for being, what, like between 8 and 12, maybe? In fairness, Grandpa is human. And he was legitimately trained. Whereas Splinter, in the movie universe anyway, was just the pet that watched his master. So that's the equivalent of you watching a Jean-Claude Van Damme like instructional tape and then teaching it to your niece. Well, I mean, it, it goes one step further because there's no instruction to it. So it's more just like watching a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie <laughs> and then going on to train somebody. <laughs> it's like I can teach you karate. I have Wikipedia and YouTube. <laughs> Steven Seagal's classes I took. That's how he did it for us. <laughs> so yeah, I have several times listed here. These kids are human ninja turtles. Yeah. They're pretty skilled. Like I said, they do a lot of the stuff. I know the guy or whoever is them. They're like in the ninja suits and like they're doing some pretty advanced acrobatics. I think that's the only time there's a, a stunt double really for them that I could notice the rest of the time. I wonder if they were cast for, like they literally said, like, <laughs> if you have martial arts experience, that's a plus. Because they all do pretty good. They all have pretty yeah. good coordination and doing the choreography and stuff. They're doing all of this training. Grandfather evidently like goes into town and then he's coming back in his car and then they ambush his car to attack him. <laughs> And this just reminded me of like in Pink Panther when Clouseau goes back to his house and it's like his butler or whatever who just like always pops out of nowhere and just starts like dueling him. Right. <laughs> I was more concerned that he threw ninja stars. They yeah, were sharp. I, my, my note here is like <laughs> for your last test, you have to kill your grandfather to absorb his power because <laughs> that's what it seems like they're trying to do. Well, And then what, I, it, what they continue to fight, but every... Every strike was a kill shot. (laughs) So this is actually the gritty sequel to the other movie, Four Ninjas. He grandpa killed one of the kids. (laughs) The movie opens with them putting flowers on a tombstone and then grandpa jumps out and attacks them. Yeah, Rocky Colt and Tum Tum, poor Boulder couldn't be here today. (laughs) Grandpa, you were too hard on him. (laughs) That's why the father hates the grandfather the entire movie. (laughs) You killed my favorite. I really don't know why I still let my boys come to your house. <laughs> the last time I let them go to the San Bernardino Ninja <laughs> School for Wayward Boys. They're not wayward boys. They live at my house. Um, <laughs> go to school. Um, they also L, or yell um, one of the tropes that I guess they carry on from the Power Rangers. I mean, the, not from the Power Rangers, but... It's customary yeah. to yell "aya" before every every strike, and I just as a ninja, I don't think you're trying to be too loud. That's my only real criticism of this movie is lots of "ayas." Three ninjas. Not accurate. <laughs> Children <laughs> scream. Aya. How do you spell that? I A-Y- just put A Y A A A A A. Between strikes. <laughs> so I don't Literally know. Literally like, unwatchable. I don't, I don't know too much in terms of actual martial arts, like from watching it. I'm pretty sure none of this was ninjutsu. <laughs> Still cool. I still love it. They do, but I don't think any of it was ninjutsu. They do creep and hide in trees and such, and like uh, make themselves unseen, as an assassin might do. They just 
they don't carry out with assassinations. Do you know where the actual ninja outfit comes from? Lay it on me. The Franco Nero movie? <laughs> it's actually from theater. Because they dressed up in black in order to do set changes while a play is like actually being shown. Right, to be non-distracting. Right. And so that's where a lot hand? of the Americanized... Yeah, that's where the Americanized ninja comes from is because they take that and then they just made them like martial arts and stuff. Because real ninjas... I mean, like how obvious are you if you wear a getup that looks like a foot clan member versus just wear plain clothes and blend into the environment like a normal person and you would never be able to pick them out out of a crowd true do normal people blend into the environment oh you mean look like a normal person i see yeah i gotcha <laughs> not like the predator <laughs> beep, boop, beep. Well, thanks for that knowledge drop. I had no idea. That was fun. That was fun trivia. Dean, not you're learning so IMDb. much today. Yeah, I am. Precocious ninjas. The more you know. So, Grandpa is the ultimate ninja here. And I like how he even tells Tum Tum that, because uh, I think Tum Tum's the one who jumps out in front of the car to ambush them. And he's like, Oh, uh, Michael. What? If I hadn't stopped the car, you would have been called pancake by now you would have stopped you wouldn't you would have stopped grandpa right and then it just grandpa <laughs> just like doesn't say anything and stares at him right <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't stare at him he stares slightly off and past him and you just in the background hear like a fourth kid's voice <laughs> grandpa, oh, grandpa no, no. <laughs> grandpa there's too many of them what are we gonna do <laughs> Right? Boulder, you have to fend them off. <laughs> Grandpa <laughs> needs to live another day. I, he does this. He yeah. So they they fight him. And Grandpa disappears in a exploding ninja cloud of smoke that is common for ninjas. Can and I then, say I always wanted one of those? <laughs> oh, who doesn't? Right, like ninja vanish, and then the the pellet goes down, and there's enough smoke to actually vanish. They always. It's how I leave every meeting at work. I know it's supposed to be used as cover, but it always makes it feel like it's a magic thing that just makes them disappear and like teleport somewhere. But you gotta <laughs> have the skills clears, to do it. Like ten <laughs> seconds too early, you just see him running. <laughs> <laughs> I misplaced my throw. But when he gets, what if he throws it at somebody and then they disappear? <laughs> I mean, that's just as good, right? Yeah, you're out of danger. Um, when he gets to the tree, you hear you don't know where he is, and he's he starts laughing. <laughs> And I immediately thought like the Billy laugh from Predator. That's what it sounded like to me. <laughs> Skin body falls down from the tree. Boulder. Boulders. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa teaches them two important lessons here. Don't attack unless you know you'll win. And you do not talk about Fight Club. Ah, two lessons you have to learn from this battle. Number one, never attack unless you're going to win. And lesson two? Don't climb a tree that's full of thorns. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell your dad. I know, like, the his lesson is the whole, like, don't start a fight you can't win or, like, don't attack unless you know you can win. Don't wear the check, you're asking. With your mouth, your ass can't catch. <laughs> well, that's the international cut. But, like, it, I don't know if that's the best advice. I feel like there's a lot of fights in life that are worth fighting even when you know you're not, like, guaranteed to win it. Yeah. Unless maybe he doesn't mean, like, you can't fight town hall. It's, no, actually ninja fights. Don't start a ninja fight you can't win. Yeah, specifically, because, yeah, then, like, lots of lots of historical events would never have happened, and... Yeah. Inspired like others and, to uh, pick up the mantle. And Xerxes, you just got to make a god king bleed. That's all. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so then we um, get to a cut to a scene where uh, Grandpa is bestowing ninja masks and ninja names. Samuel. Sir. From this day forward until forever, you shall be known as Rocky because you are strong, solid. Cool as granite rock. Ah, 
castle. Yes. Jeffrey. Ah, you were fast and free, spirit of the young wild horse. You shall be known as Colt. Colt? That's cool. And Michael becomes Tum Tum because his energy begins and ends with his tummy. I like it. He gets to Tum Tum before he says it. Tum Tum's like, What about me? Can I be Monster Destroyer? How about Super Killer? It'd be funny if Grandpa was like, Oh, you know what? Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're Super Killer. That's just Whatever, his name for the Tum Tum. <laughs> um, and Tum Tum, you'll be the frog. And then we cut to Dad at his job and. He's driving a limo. Presumably it's the dad. They the don't the most name, 90s scene I've ever seen <laughs> with the Sultan Sheik getting out of a limo in a warehouse <laughs> doing a business deal with a guy in a white suit and ponytail surrounded by a ninja bodyguard. Yeah. That's yeah. 90s. <laughs> <laughs> that is pinnacle. Um, I was like, I was slightly concerned at first. I was like, oh, is this guy doing like brown face? Like, because I, yeah, I, I forgot like, that it was a this... sting operation. So... Yeah, I was going to say, like, the, it seems like they just kind of threw an outfit on this guy because he looks vaguely, like, California slash yeah. maybe Italian. Like maybe Italian. <laughs> I was like, they're really just saying this guy is Middle Eastern, and then it makes sense, but because it turns into a sting operation. And that mustache. Yeah. <laughs> but I was concerned they were doing a short circuit on this for a second. It is a pleasure to do business with you, Mr. Snyder. Now... On behalf of the people of my country, I would like to say, you're under arrest. Freeze, Snyder, FBI! So I like how ninja attack always beats FBI sting. Yeah, even there's guns, but they just can't fire fast enough, I guess. I, well, they, they did get taken by surprise a little bit. The, the whole FBI thing, we have this Sultan Sheik come out of this limousine with a, a briefcase handcuffed to him to meet with this guy in a white suit and a ponytail... Uh, with his bodyguard to make some sort of kind of like an arms deal uh, before revealing that he is an FBI agent and they break out all their guys. And the other guy doubles down by breaking out all of his hidden ninja all across the warehouse. I like how he even knocks out the agent by just giving him like a slap to the face. It wasn't <laughs> a punch. It wasn't anything critical that would have knocked him out. It was just... <laughs> Open palm. What did Open five palm. fingers say to the face? <laughs> <laughs> what did the five fingers say to the face? <laughs> what? Slap! Yeah, they they didn't even, they brought fake money to the operation too. They just they put like what like a thousand dollars on top of the case, and the rest was just paper, blank paper. They thought he at least had gotten away with some money. Which then he is on the he knocks out that other guard. <laughs> Pulls him over his shoulder and like runs away with him and then gets stopped by two other FBI guys who look like they're on their off day. And then he proceeds to walk up to them and just beat them senseless and then run away. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the scenes that was cut for uh, one of the releases. This is inter That was international only where he gets the second set of guys. I guess they cut as much fighting you didn't need out of the movie. So he makes it to the roof. Yeah. And he quips. He's, he quips. All right, freeze, Snyder! It's over! Don't move a muscle! I'd love to stay in chat, but I've got to fly! Which I love how he says, I've got to fly. What The father gets up there, the kid's father, has him, has his, like, gut out and whatnot, and then after he finishes his one-liner, the helicopter just pops up behind him. How is that helicopter <laughs> silent until after... <laughs> That one liner, like where the blades not going. <laughs> it might have you idle a helicopter midair. It might have been perfect timing, and the helipad was down, you know, below, and he just <laughs> yeah, what, he just timed inches? the quip correctly. <laughs> they did like a dress rehearsal. <laughs> They've been going up there for the past three days. Too early, too early. Go back down now. After the FBI agent reveals it's a sting, <laughs> I'm gonna go up these stairs. The sheik is on his way. Places people. <laughs> Uh, so the dad's, their dad's, uh, when I say dad, I'm referring to the three ninjas dad. So he's forever dad in this. Yeah. Kirk Douglas. I forget his name. He's Sam. He's Sam Douglas. That's like Rocky is Sam Jr. So Sam Douglas 
he uh his partner comes up and is like we got it we got all the bazookas we got all the weapons it's like a warehouse for world war three we got it all we got nothing i want snyder he's everything i want him he fires 10 shots into the air <laughs> and then jumps off the roof and we don't know what happens to him <laughs> and then we get a scene we cut to snyder has made it safely back to his some kind of very nice looking study wherever his his uh compound is somewhere nearby maybe um with his subordinate assistant mr brown he's complaining like that he almost got caught it was his ass on the line i hear they almost got us boss me got me brown not us the high school was on the line today that was sam douglas for god's sake i like their like relationship because it wasn't just like master and like peon kind of thing it was he almost stood toe to toe with him but just like they're like co-partners kind of thing. Yeah, it's like a uh, Trevor and Ron from uh, Grand Theft Auto. If you ever played that, it's kind of like that. Yeah. Um, except Snyder just has that physically imposing, I will, as he says several times, I will tear out your heart. I will tear out your liver, threatening him to do a good job. So he holds that over his head. This scene is pretty quick, but we, we do learn that uh, he has a relationship somehow with uh, the boy's grandpa. The ninja master the as you said it's a a very quick scene because i start writing a note and i say back at bad guy headquarters and then it's, it's immediately out of the next scene my only note is well that was fast <laughs> <laughs> yeah we just quickly get a little exposition and okay he made it out of there i guess it was really just to throw in some history that they have with uh, grandpa uh and then we're back at the san bernardino compound uh <laughs> This it looks like a very cozy home. I like this house. It is nice. Yeah, it's in the hills. It's a lot of shade, a lot of cover. I can't tell also if this is daytime or like evening. So I can't tell if the kids are working together to make like breakfast for grandpa or is this like dinner? Nondescript meal time. <laughs> Here's general meal. They seem to apply like being a ninja to everything they do, and that includes making uh, dinner, or I guess it's dinner because it's rice and vegetables. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I missed what they were making. Yeah, so rice I just, and I was vegetables. Like, what? What is? What Potatoes. meal is this? Maybe they're vegetarian. I didn't. I didn't see any meat. I don't know. It's probably unhealthy that they're applying ninja to everything <laughs> in their life. <laughs> These are the things that Bilbo hates. <laughs> Ninjas. <laughs> Ninjas is what Bilbo hates. <laughs> the way that they're throwing the plates and stuff all over the place. That's true. Ah. That's right. <laughs> they are throwing every. Yeah, that's ex that's exactly right. Man, this thing. Am is I the only one that's homage, seen The Hobbit? Takes homage from lots of different movie history. It's true. So Grandpa dishes some ninja life lessons while they're eating, and then uh, they're interrupted because his uh, ninja alarm system by ADT goes off and uh this limo pulls up and a stretch bunch of limo stre ninja attack. stretch limo pulls up four ninjas appear first and i'm like oh because I, I wasn't remembering i was just like oh the ninjas took a limo to get here <laughs> but then we're headed to prom <laughs> after <laughs> we got to make this quick we're paying this driver by the hour um and then snyder gets out i'm like okay that makes sense snyder, the big bad has to right in style the ninjas like surround grandpa and you know he tells the kids to stay there but of course they don't listen and they come out and i believe it's tum tum pokes one of the ninjas in the ass and pretty much is the shot heard around the world and it, all hell breaks <laughs> loose <laughs> and they just start going after the kids and then grandpa has to start fighting too Yeah, the precocious children taking on these ninjas. The like grandpa's holding his own, of course, because he's a master. Um, make short work of everybody out front. I just would have loved, instead of telling them to run, he just like, help me! <laughs> this is what I, what the hell do you think I've been training you for? <laughs> Where you help go? Help grandpa, help him! <laughs> Don't want to end up like Boulder, do you? They have knives, I'm scared. They just like the fact their children just comes to the surface. Like we can't fight, old man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they don't have they don't have a 
too much trouble with their ninjas and it's kind of a, some cheeky scenes where <laughs> they really make these ninjas look like really like idiots and pretty inept <laughs> which i like how they're using teamwork and whatnot though yeah there's no ego in their uh their fighting style which is which is good that's necessarily what he just told him like one rope can be one strand can be cut but many you know strands together essentially are rope and it's you can't break it so i guess they're using that yeah that was the that was that quote exactly <laughs> it's in so many words hey uh boys you know uh you can you have a strand can, and then a bunch of a strands str- well if you have a bunch they're as strong as the many of the the ones that they have if you had a bunch of strands and you held each hand and you sort of twisted them you know what i mean can you let me draw it for you it's like we don't need oh, wait, this hold scene. on there's the alarm's going off I'll, I'll get back to it when we're done I'll tell you when you're older <laughs> so i this is where i said the I would love to see like an Avengers style team up of the brothers here and the brothers from Surf Ninjas. Yeah. I mean, with the fighting prowess and the special um, future seeing ability, like they're unstoppable at that point. And then they become the villains. (laughs) (laughs) That's a nice twist. I want to see that. So overall, like they, they win the fight here. Yes. And then Snyder kind of gives the grandfather the ultimatum. It's your son-in-law. Sam Douglas, get him off my back for a couple of weeks, for his sake, and yours, not for mine. Well, else you not only lose the money, they also lose a son-in-law. And who knows, with Douglas out of the way, there may be no one left to defend the honor of your beautiful daughter. Which kind of reveals a little bit more that, like, they definitely know each other here. Right. And they're... Snyder hams it up, but I am 100% on board with this. Yeah, I'm with Snyder. He's quite literally later on uh, talks about how evil he is and how much he enjoys it. But um, he, he knows he's, exactly he's... <laughs> what kind of movie he's in. Yeah. And that makes it 100% better. He's fully into this evil, evil business. Uh, he's a what tall... if he were in the same class as Colonel Chi and M. Bison. <laughs> they all went I'm, to the same school uh, of just yeah. like evil doing ninja martial artists institute of technology. The uh, Santa Clarita School for Criminal Masterminds. <laughs> and wayward way- villains. For, for wayward <laughs> criminal masterminds. <laughs> I, um, I would watch a three camera sitcom with uh, Snyder Colonel Chi and uh, M. Bison. <laughs> All living in the same Manhattan apartment. Um, yeah, that's pretty much his ultimatum. Or he's going to hurt, he's going to kill his daughter, essentially. <laughs> Threatens her life. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're going to lead with, I'll give you the money, maybe don't follow it up with, also, I'll kill your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of makes the first <laughs> offer kind of moot. Were you really going to I mean, he's money? paying for the funeral. Not a lot of killers do that. <laughs> I'm a professional. My other one I hear is a professional. Um, <laughs> so the grandfather takes the money. He takes the money. And, uh, <laughs> sends the boys to boarding school. Um, and he leaves town. <laughs> is, it, is it me or is it always like... There's always like a, a low, like short ponytail. It's like the bad guy's got like a pulled back, slicked hair, haircut. Is that just 80s, early 90s? Kind of bad guy. That might have just been eighties, early nineties. Yeah, it, it was. It's common, and I guess it it uh, continues here. It needs to be brought back. <laughs> I'm I'm starting. I mean, it's the perfect way to tell a villain in a movie. It's the equivalent of the the talk we were doing the other day about iPhones and villains can't use them. Right. Good guys can't have ponytails. Yes. If you see a ponytail in the MCU, you know there's some shit going on behind the scenes. Um. Although I think uh, the Green Ranger had a ponytail, and I think uh, <laughs> he was evil. Yeah, he was, he was evil. evil at one point. They true. turned him. Um, they cut off his ponytail, <laughs> like Samson. Shamed him because he lost a lost a fight. Um, <laughs> Shame. I'm growing my hair out so I can be a Snyder this Halloween. Um, I just need to wear stilts as well. <laughs> He's a tall guy. Maybe just compared to Grandpa, I think he's fairly short. But Well, Grandpa's two and a half feet tall. <laughs> which I guess would make the kids uh, seven inches. Grandpa lost the uh, role to play Odd Job in the... 
So Snyder leaves after threatening. I guess the kids really didn't hear what they were talking about. Um, Grant, they're just like, who was that dude? <laughs> was that your friend? Um, he chastises them for helping, but then they turn it around on him and say, Ninja shouldn't be overconfident, Grandpa. That's true. Damn it, you're right. And they all group hug and they lived happy ever after. Freeze frame, credits roll. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> step by step, day by day. Um, and then we cut to the last little training bit we get with a special dummy Grandpa has rigged up that uh, yes. lights up when it's Ooh. when a uh, certain pressure <laughs> points <aroused>. are hit. <laughs> <laughs> only yeah. kick him in the balls as the last line of defense. You can only, only use this technique. To save your lives. It's really not cool to do unless you have to. <laughs> um, which is funny because like, yeah, they let, it, Grandpa tells them like, these are the five points to hit to like really make them hurt and only remember that it, they can't remember anything except how much it hurt. And then they it start just training. reminded me of the, the Miss Congeniality bit with Sandra Bullock when she's doing the, what is it, the, like the solar plexus instep nose groin. I haven't seen. The haven't four seen points to hit. Really? Oh, wow. sorry. It's fun. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know it's one of the better hailed chick flicks, but uh, I haven't seen it. So I like how <laughs> their grandpa explains to them that there's a certain hits that they will be. Uh, was it like a forgetting anything about yeah. what was happening? They'll forget everything due to except the pain. how much it hurt. Yeah, so it's like a memory wipe. Like, I was expecting, like, a Xena Warrior Princess pressure point to insta-kill them or, like, a Fist of the North Star situation Tim, to explode they're, his they're heart. children. <laughs> the five-point exploding heart technique. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I like how the Grandpa teaches them. It's like, okay, go for, like, the pressure points, and then it's, like, the head, and then go for the groin, and, and then he just leaves. And it's like, I want you to perfect groin blasts on this scarecrow until you can kill a man. It is funny because he leaves, they start training, and really all you see is like, uh, I forget what Colt and uh, Rocky are talking about, but in the foreground, you don't see what he's doing, but it looks like Tum Tum is just hitting him in the nuts. Like, he's just repeatedly <laughs> kicking the dummy over and over again in the nuts. What was with that guy in the white suit? I don't know. From the way he acted with Grandpa, I think the whole attack was fake. Hey, those swords were real, buddy. I still don't know. I think he's just an old friend of Grandpa's. He didn't look very friendly to me. Well, what's more dangerous, <laughs> the man who's practiced 5,000 techniques or the man who's practiced one punch 5,000 times? I see Tum Tum is a master of Jeet Kune Do. <laughs> Not Kune Do. Um, yeah, so no we... can do. <laughs> then we go back, uh, Grandpa grandpa has to bring the kids home because he just got threatened and he's think he has to try to figure out what's going to what his, his next move is so uh, also the kids have to go to school so grandpa takes them home and they're singing a song the, in yes. this car <laughs> all covered with blood i shot my poor teacher with a four Look who's here. Uh, it did not age well. I don't even know if it would be good for the time, but they're singing about mm -hmm. like... I forget. Yeah, something about... it was All I caught was the, something about like blood everywhere and shooting their teacher. Shooting and I was like, teacher. wait, what? It was a It's a very familiar uh, melody. And I'm like, what is the original? I forget what it's like based on, but they have their twisted version of it with yeah, their lyrics. Say, Spaghetti this is like some sort of like body count song. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. All covered in cheese. Yes. Oh, yes. I dropped my poor meatball. <laughs> and shot my teacher. <laughs> yeah. That was the ABBA song, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was, that stuck out to I me. I shot the teacher. I That's shot Bob Marley. the teacher. But I did yeah, not Bob. shoot the principal. Um, so I like how they get to the house and the father is there. And the father uh, gets introduced to his kids again, seeing as all of them are Rocky, Colt now. And then Tum Tum says, I'm Tum Tum. And that's the one that breaks the father's concentration from what he's saying. He's like, wait, what? you're Tum Tum. 
Not Rocky and Colt. My kid's Tum Tum. Great. I want to show you a lot of stuff we learned. Look, Jeffrey, show me that it's stuff not later. Jeffrey. Will you? It's Colt. Yeah, no, Jeffrey. not Sam. I'm Rocky. I'm Sam. Michael, you're Tum Tum? Yeah, you see, I'm Colt because I'm fast. He's Rocky because he's solid. And he's Tum Tum because he'll eat anything. And when he dog poop. It's bad enough he's got you doing karate all summer. What? They need new names? Can't live with that shit. Which then he says he has to leave. And I like how he then looks at Colton, say, uh, says to kiss his mother hello for him. But the mother is literally standing behind Colt <laughs> when he says that. And then the father gets in the car and takes off. Couldn't do that yourself, you son of a bitch. Yeah, it's like seven steps. They probably go to the strip club, too. They're not even going to, to investigate. <laughs> Just cuts to them at the titty bar. Just can't stand that house anymore. <laughs> Um, Can't believe he's dumb, dumb. <laughs> my boy, <laughs> my boy, <laughs> my boy. I've abandoned my boy. Um, uh, Rocky gets teased because I guess it's not. Is it not his girlfriend, right? Because they're so awkwardly standing there, like. I think it's just I a like neighborhood you, girl like that they kind of like each other. Yeah, they have fucking tin uh, their own communication personal communication yeah. system it's i think like, it might just probably be like the neighborhood f girl that they're friends with but like rocky's the one that kind of likes her right and he's yeah, macking right. on the neighborhood girl while tum tum just like is rolling his eyes into the back of his head in the back of the car <laughs> yeah that was funny and then he presents himself like it's just like hey uh i'm here too <laughs> hey, i'm tum tum i want to take a I'm tum tum here's my number <laughs> He just gives her, like, a tin can. Age is just a number. <laughs> just gives her a piece of string. <laughs> <laughs> he gives it to her, then he just, like, just a long shot of him just, like, going and setting it up, like, taping it up the side of the house. Um, could have done without this scene. Hold on, I have another call. Mom, Jessica Douglas, um... She's supposed to be half Japanese, and I feel like she does kind of look like she has, like, Japanese. I don't know if the actress really does or not, but I don't know. I was like, oh, yeah, you kind of look part Japanese. And, like, she would be, like, John and Joan Cusack's, Cusack's uh, sibling. They kind of She kind of looked like them. Like, Joan a little bit to me. Sure. Yeah, that's all. I just was like, you look like a Cusack. <laughs> a slightly Japanese Cusack. And then, uh, next scene... We're with Snyder, bad guy back to Snyder, practicing. Uh, he's got Mr. Brown is wearing uh, like assistant uh, martial arts gear, and Snyder is beating down on him. Mr. Brown, I want you to snatch those few little kids and hold them as insurance until the deal with Colonel Burrick is done, huh? As uh, the what's the I I don't know his name in the movie, but the big Brown? Japanese muscle. Oh oh oh! Uh, he I think his name in the movie was Rushmore. Rushmore. That's a great name. He's just kind of watching I don't know why you didn't just go by his real name. Just Professor Tenoru Tanaka. <laughs> Mount Rushmore, I, mean, that's I guess. Menacing. Just like being cheeky. Um, oh, wait, wait. No, why the, Mount uh, Rushmore? Could call him like Fuji or something. Mount Fuji because he's so big. And he's Japanese. Is he though? Uh, I'm pretty sure he's Japanese. I think he was Rushmore because he was a big Wes Anderson fan. <laughs> In the future, like he knew he had like the advanced script, like <laughs> just this is gonna big be guy, great. I saved Latin. <laughs> uh so Snyder is beating down uh not I mean he's he's practicing with Mr. Brown, but he's essentially beating him up. I feel like he threatens his staff, but like he's not a terrible boss. <laughs> no, they all seem to not. be pretty they're cool all alive uh yeah they they're get... all alive they all seem to be doing well he doesn't i mean he doesn't really physically assault them he's just practicing his uh martial arts here he's just sparring <laughs> he's sparring exactly that's one-sided sparring think of. So, which i like how snyder decides to steal the kids leverage by sending his greatest warrior the guy that looks like his accountant <laughs> right you better and he really just he is a very trusting because he's like, this is a big part of his plan. And he's like, yeah, you got this, right? Like, you, you're you the project manager. You hire the team. Like, it's, you got this. <laughs> he's trying to give him, like, just some experience so he can move up in well, the world. Honestly, the it's the only way he's going to grow his resume and become <laughs> his own boss. He's so, not going to be in middle management of evil forever. He really is a good... He's, he's 
he's tough, but it's like tough love. You know, he's like trying to get him. Yeah. Snatch those kids without getting caught, or I'm going to crush your head onto a slimy ooze comes out of your eyeballs. No, no problem, boss. I'll, I'll get right over there. His plan is to I've got I'm going to meet with the real Sheik or whoever <laughs> who was supposed to meet in that sting operation, but I need their dad off my back, FBI agent Sam Douglas. So kidnap his kids and use that as leverage and he gives that to mr brown to figure out mr brown's like if, if i may suggest mr snyder three guys who did some some messenger work for us a few times but my sister's kid and, and his buddies they're terrific these guys were great yeah then it cuts to uh them the the stooges I, what we got the the surfer three this three the stooges. surfers three yeah this scene, I think, was cut from one of the versions, maybe the video release or something, but they are holding up, uh, well, they're in a convenience store. <laughs> oh, their introduction, I love the misdirection. It's great. Like, they're standing there staring at a magazine. You see the cover, it says Surfer Chicks, and they're, like, looking at the centerfold, <laughs> and they're like, it's beautiful. <laughs> and they cut, and it's just a surfboard that they're staring at, and I thought that was pretty good. These guys carried the movie for me entirely. Absolutely. Like, I was expecting them to be, like, once they were introduced, they were going to be the ongoing thing throughout the rest of the movie. But they only really had the one big set piece that they were involved with, and then they were back out of it. Yeah, they had a couple cutaways leading up to the their mission of getting the kids and their big set piece there, but... It was a that was that did cover like thirty minutes of the movie, I think. True, which I think over like the movie felt very short because I think overall it was really only like maybe I don't know six big scenes. Yeah, yeah, and then just a couple quick things to set up the next piece. Right, time is one hour thirty five minutes. Yep, or at least my cut, including the credits. Like a brisk forty (laughs) nine. Um, (laughs) yeah, that's good. It moved along. It uh, didn't overstay its welcome. But the Stooges here, they are extremely Californian. They have the most, uh, I mean, that accent is real, but it's its its kind of like when you hear a Boston accent in a movie, like, You all know me. I'm not just a cop. I'm a father. I'm a son. And above all, I'm from Boston. To the nth degree. It's, it's the Californians on SNL. <laughs> like, that's how they're talking. Hammer? Go score the frozen fruit concentrate in those gnarly little snack cakes. No sweat, dude. Cool. Marcus, score some nacho chips and some radical salsa. Dude, none of that green stuff. Dude. I thought of them as intellectual valley dudes. Like an alternate all like an alternate universe Bill and Ted. <laughs> yeah, like it reminded me of like Wayne from Wayne's World and Theodore Logan combined, but not ever being oh, yeah, derivative Fester. of it. It's like Fester was his own character. It was fun, but he just gave me those vibes, which I don't know. Like, it, maybe it's a really specific niche, but I love movies where there's like the henchmen who are just kind of dumb, but also eloquent. <laughs> they held up that store in the most polite way possible. <laughs> and you, my good man, open up the cash register. That's right, dude. Us three boneheads are sticking you up. <laughs> And then his beeper goes off and he asks for the guy if he can use the phone. <laughs> After he fires three warning shots right yeah. next to his head. <laughs> now open up that register before I have to get nasty. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Can I please use your telephone? It's like he's unhinged. He's a loose cannon. <laughs> um, they were all, I mean, the blonde haired white guy didn't get as much uh, stuff to do. But uh, he had zero lines through the whole movie. Yeah, he really didn't. They didn't really give him too much. He was just kind of a, a carbon copy of those guys, but just without really saying anything. But the main guy, Fester, and I forget the the eight long-haired Asian guy's name, but they were both really good. They had a lot of good lines in this. So, yeah, this just introduces, like, okay, these are the guys that are going to be kidnapping the kids. Fester is, like, the de facto leader of this little entourage uh he calls uh, it's mr Fester, brown marcus and hammer by the way marcus i think marcus is the asian guy is marcus asian i have no idea okay in any case fester calls mr brown and like gets the job from them <laughs> and in no uncertain terms mr brown's like Fester, don't screw this up we'll have to kill you 
Summer. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> very nonchalantly is pretty good. He's accepted death. They have like it's their character's so funny because there's like a purity to them and like a politeness, but they also were just like do scumbag work and like have pretty much no remorse. They're like kind of sociopathic. <laughs> It's it's almost like they're oddly true neutral in the uh, <laughs> right. the alignment scale because yeah. it's at one point they're having pizza trying to kidnap the kids and they're like this is pretty good pizza we should just save some for the kids they seem like pretty good guys <laughs> they're probably nice and then not ten minutes later it's we have to kill these kids this is played how they true see it. neutral yeah so I like how he's like remember this number. So Fester decides to split the workout, and he's like, okay, you remember three. You got a pen? Here's the address. 623 North Pacheco. That's 623. You got that? Okay. You remember six. You remember two. I remember three. Pacheco. Okay, I got it, sir. Get right on it. It's dumb, but I guess if it works, man. Speaking of the house, is this the same neighborhood that was shot for E.T.? I mean, they're both in California for sure. Well, I mean, like the specific exterior shots, you see the mountain in the background. Like when E.T. is trick-or-treating, the whole neighborhood looks exactly the same. I mean, I live out here. There's a lot of places that look like that. Oh, really? It's very possible because movies, once a location is found and people like it, like it'll it'll be used a lot. Like if it looks cinematic, etc., whatever, what have you. So it's possible. It 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 could be some other neighborhood because there's so many out here that are like suburban and with sprawling mountains in the background. But yeah, um, like late '80s, early '90s California suburbia for some reason just like connects with me. It's like the same thing. In um, eventually I'll pick the movie The Gate with Stephen Dorff. It was the yeah. same case of like all of these little California suburbs and cul de sacs with almost seems like a a, a quainter time. It's a shared universe. It's a shared universe. All that stuff happened in suburbia, California. E.T., the gate, and three ninjas. <laughs> the weirdest Avengers supergroup. <laughs> I watched that as a cartoon. Saturday morning cartoon. Um, so Is this when we get the line from Snyder? God, I love being a bad guy. <laughs> he has no delusions about what he's doing, or he's not lying to himself. He's like, yeah, he's a scumbag, and he's like... He's living his truth. He, is. he sells it. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> I can't imagine him getting any role other than just like a, some kind of villain or antagonist. He's just one of those guys that it's like, you're good at doing this, so I'm sorry, but I hope you've accepted it. <laughs> Maybe someday in the future you can, uh, you know, buck the trend. I feel like if this were a movie made nowadays, it would follow like the Fast and the Furious trend of they stop Snyder in this one. He gets locked up by the FBI and by the third movie, Snyder has to get pulled back out of prison to join the three ninjas to help them. He's helping them, yeah. That's when we get the Grandpa and Snyder movie. (laughs) Give us that. So we cut now to we're at home with the kids later that night. Super Mario 3. Yeah. And I just wanted... I think as a kid, I remember like, oh, I just want to fucking play that game and like watch Tum Tum play Mario Brothers instead of the scene continuing on. I'm like, show the Nintendo more. <laughs> Even though I had one at had the time, Sega? but oh, <laughs> no, we had a Nintendo by that at that by that time, and I, but I don't think I don't maybe I didn't have Super Mario Brothers three. Maybe I just had the first one. I don't know. I was like, oh shit, he's playing games. I got one of those. Um, I like how they're relentlessly hassling Rocky yes. about <laughs> Say hi to your girlfriend for me. Yeah, say hi to your girlfriend for me. She's not my girlfriend, okay? Rocky loves Emily. Rocky, Rocky loves Emily. Emily. Rocky loves What's Emily. What's going on? My brothers are Emily. retarded. Rocky loves Emily. Rocky loves Emily. <laughs> I would say that all the time. Yeah, so this is where they have, we see Rocky communicates with Emily somewhere in the neighborhood, presumably. They've set up, they've set up a telephone, a tin can to tin can on a string telephone system or something. Because it's literally tin It goes tin like across cans. the street, then it follows it, it goes like up the mountain, over through the other side. <laughs> it's like the, 
<laughs> they have a really nice like uh, boom arm, and then it's just a tin can taped to it. Like that's their uh, communication system. He picks it up. He's like, "Yes, I'd like to dial area code." It's a small <laughs> child in like a switchboard room, and she just like takes the string off one hook, ties the two strings together. That's Your amazing. Call is now connected. That's a great idea, actually. Save that in the in the hall of ideas. That'll <laughs> we'll use that some other time. Uh, mom comes up and they're oh, like, "Oh, it Shit. triggers their Ferris Bueller alarm system." Yeah, mom's coming. Mom, gotta go. Bye. Yeah, they all scrambled to be from ADT acting. Like <laughs> they scramble to act like they've been in bed, and she comes in, and she clearly didn't hear the trampoline and the scrambling as they. <laughs> Very ninja-like, went back into their beds. Hey, Grandpa helped them soundproof the room, <laughs> just for this specific <laughs> purpose. That's the only thing that took me out of the movie, was that alarm that go went off, like a proximity alarm. That, you know, with the small house that they have, it would know specifically when her mother had the intent of walking into their bedroom. She it's, could have just plus, been taking laundry to her bedroom, but the alarm was going off. Plus, it alerts them, but it's not loud enough for the mother to hear it standing outside the door. <laughs> right. It's weight sensitive. In a movie with child ninjas, that's the most unrealistic thing. <laughs> yep. Also, I like how Tum Tum has the appetite of Rizzo the Rat from Muppets. Him with <laughs> yeah, like his pretty, jelly bean thing. It's pretty severe. And he almost dies. He chokes on it a little bit, too. Um, I, th I, I feel like that was ad-libbed. You might have actually choked. <laughs> Somebody goes to help him. John Turtletop is like, no, we're still rolling. Uh, and then we cut outside and we find out that the three stooges are embroiled in the class warfare. In their die yuppie scum van. <laughs> yeah. It says the front of their Volkswagen minibus says die yuppie scum. Like... <laughs> Not like it was like scrawled on there. They got like cut out decal letters and like it's like on their van. It's not like mismatched like uh, the threatening letter. No, yeah, right. It's all the same font. Which they seem like such chillax dudes to then have die yuppie scum on the front of their van. It's like, it seems a little violent for them. Although then they're also all carrying guns and they just held up a place. Right. Uh, so they pull up to the house because they're gonna get these kids and then <laughs> i love this like cars pull up they duck down and people get out and they're like <laughs> those guys look like feds or something Dude. meanwhile it says fbi on their jackets <laughs> <laughs> are they feds or something <laughs> it's like big yellow letters fbi <laughs> um and then they realize they can't get in there so They'll come back tomorrow night, but in the meantime, it's Slurpees. Well, my dangerous buds, tomorrow is another day, and those little dudes are ours. Slurpee? Radical. Slurpee? Dude, we're out of here. These three are a blast. Also, yeah. it would have been a hard left turn if they see those FBI guys, and then they just get out with their guns and just <laughs> mow them down and go into the house. Oh my god. You don't want to be here right now. <laughs> Yeah, again, they're just like sociopathic and like is how they're so polite. Like you could you could have like a nice conversation with them probably. And then they just turn around and like we'll start shooting at cashier. Um we get, from here we get this quick shot of grandpa in full ninja regalia practicing at <laughs> night, like swearing like he's going to kill and bla bathe in the blood of his enemies. Well, he finishes practicing with a sword, and then he says some line like he looks at it, he's like, soon, old friend. <laughs> he's like, we're going to protect our family. Yeah, something to that effect. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the sword talks. It's Vin Diesel's voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you forgot this was a Disney film? Grip has a talking sword. Family's all you got, Grandpa. <laughs> It just cuts down to, like, the bag of shrooms Grandpa's got out. <laughs> it cuts back to him. His pupils are entirely dilated. <laughs> and then it cuts, and he's actually, like, in his closet at home. like just <laughs> And then it cuts back, and you find out he doesn't have any grandchildren. <laughs> and he's There's four jacket. tombstones out by his tree. <laughs> then Bob Newhart wakes up, and he's like, it was a weird dream. 
it has like a quick like two you know two second scene and we're back uh it's the next morning and the boys are heading to school they're riding bikes with emily to school and uh they decide to take a uh shortcut we realize that the three stooges have been staking out the place outside their house and they see them uh leaving for school so they follow them and uh the boys go through this gated off area that says keep out and it's like construction and stuff and uh, emily takes an alternate route but uh <laughs> this is i love throughout the movie it starts here but like how fascinated by the kids fester and the two guys are like <laughs> like these kids are so cool <laughs> <laughs> like they're they're following them, watching them do ramps in the construction yard, like Paperboy. I mean, I know it probably is going to make us feel bad, but watching this in the '90s, we were Rocky, Colton, Tum Tum. Watching this now, I'm Fester, Marcus, and uh, the other one. <laughs> Man, those kids are cool. <laughs> uh, so they're paying more attention to the kids doing jumps and don't see the. Police officer parked in front of them and rear end the cop. Uh oh. Fender bender. Which, when the cop gets out and reaches for his ticket book, I thought he was reaching for his gun. <laughs> as you say, wow. <laughs> California has a, zero chill. That's great. It's a fun. This is another. This scene got me too. This little quick moment. The cop gets out and the boys <laughs> come riding by, and one of them's like, Not you. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that that was that was a pretty good moment. So they lose Emily and uh Rocky decides to go back and look for her because she didn't follow them into the construction area. All of a sudden they hear her calling for help. Rocky! And when they get there, it's the bullies. The bullies have arrived. The roving California street gang. <laughs> the street gang stealing bikes in the morning. Uh, maybe like, they were going why through... Why are there so many roving gangs of bullies <laughs> in suburbia in these movies? Maybe they were going through their territory. Uh, it's just... Emily didn't, <laughs> Emily didn't know the way. It was like the warrior situation? <laughs> yeah. Take off your colors, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> and you can walk through... <laughs> <laughs> you tramp they walk over they see tum tum like handcuffed to the park bench <laughs> hey lady what are you doing out here <laughs> um yeah so oh, i guess one thing i appreciate these bullies that we find out later um they're not like trying to physically kill the people they're not going to carve their names into anybody's stomach like they're yeah, pretty they're not stephen king bullies yeah they're like okay i could buy these kids probably exist at some They're like time. Hocus Pocus bullies. Yeah. They look like them, too. Yeah. <laughs> We're just here to steal your stuff. Yeah, just be a little intimidating, take the lunch money, like, okay, I can buy that. By the time they get to Emily, the boys are already making off with the bike. Emily's pissed because Rocky was shown off and didn't... <laughs> this is where I was wondering, like, does she pay them protection money to, like, get her to school? Like... Why is it his fault that, like, she happened to run into bullies? Like, was this... Did she know this Like, how this would might she have happen? handled any other day without them? <laughs> right. <laughs> Not paying you this week, Rocky. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they head to school. She's pissed, and Rocky's in the doghouse. Uh, and then we get Stooges <laughs> checking in with Snyder. Festin, this is not going to please Mr. Snyder, if you know what I mean. Well, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, but you must understand the situation was intense. <laughs> I mean, there were FBI guys there. Uh, and you had previously indicated that you wished us to maintain, like, a mega serious level of silence, sir. When it cuts back to Snyder here, the way he yells... Look, you just get those kids tonight. Before midnight, do you understand? Just reminds me of Austin Powers. Just like, when Austin Powers gets unfrozen, he's like... Who are these people? The shouting is a temporary side effect of the unfreezing process. Yes, I'm having difficulty controlling the volume of my voice! Like, just the way that Snyder yells, he's just so hot <laughs> and cold and like... Brown, back those guys up if you have to, but Brown... I WANT THOSE KIDS! 
after they hang up, it cuts from back from Snyder back to the Stooges in the phone booth, and he's like, "They're like, what time does school end?" And the, the guy's like, "Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I never stayed there that long <laughs> to find <laughs> out." Um, just to show you, they say every scene they cut. It's like we know who we're dealing with, but it's still they keep adding pieces and pieces of their character that. Like that, it just makes me laugh. What they really could have used is the San Bernardino School for <laughs> Wayward Boys. Wayward Boys. He's got to advertise better. He's only ever taught <laughs> his family. He's like his word of mouth is not working. He's gonna carve it into some ninja and then release <laughs> him back into. Uh... So we cut back. Tell him, Grandpa I sent you. <laughs> this is metal. I want to check this place out. Um. <laughs> So we cut back Rhett's school uh, at recess. I assume this is recess. And um, the bull- the schoolyard bullies show back up. And they're giving Colt some shit. Which I like how we saw the same thing in Little Monsters. That as soon as the bullies show up and then the brothers show up. Some kids like fight. And then all like immediately <laughs> everybody stops what they're doing. And they're just silent in a circle around them. This is called on site, which means it's as soon as I see you, <laughs> we start throwing hands. <laughs> on site, my man. Um, which I wanted to see Colt just open up on these kids because the entire time yeah. his like has fists clenched and he's in like a battle stance. And Rocky's like, no, 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 calm down. I can see like an Ender's Game situation here where he just like breaks the kid's nose into his skull and kills him, and it's like this movie becomes very different. <laughs> <laughs> Light up the eyes, boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's some standard uh, bully lines coming from their de facto leader. Give us the ball back. Oh, does the baby want his ball back? We get at the place for it. Rocky steps in and is like, two versus two, bitch. Not his exact line. <laughs> Not his exact Not line. Not his exact line. No. <laughs> In the international version, that's what it was, but probably not in the video release. <laughs> Too hot for America. <laughs> uh, so, like, how much are we wagering on this game? And they're like, We're not supposed to gamble. <laughs> <laughs> what am I hearing? We're not supposed to gamble. Well, I wouldn't want to do anything to make your mommy or your daddy spank you. <laughs> Is gambling a problem in this, at the school? <laughs> Not since that night we went to Vegas with Grandpa and spent the money Dad was going to use in that sting operation. <laughs> That's why he always says, don't bet unless you know you can win. <laughs> I wanted them to be like, what are we betting for? And Colt just be like, our lives. <laughs> if we win, I get to kill both of you. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> That's why in that sting operation, there was that, that briefcase was Full of blank, was <laughs> fake money because the, the boys gambled it all away. Oh, so that's why the father looks surprised in that scene too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh shit! We had a real Empire Records situation here. So they took all their money to a casino. <laughs> so yeah, they set up this basketball game with the bullies. Um, but Colt and Rocky spot them nine points out of ten. So they're baiting them into thinking it's going to be easy, and then they pull shark it on them. Uh, Colt and Rocky really kicked their ass and I didn't I missed the scene at the beginning where they Grandpa taught them basketball <laughs> well ninja skills just translate <laughs> I guess so I like how even if you know that you're probably going to win why spot them nine points I feel like that's just showboating yeah and it didn't work out for them in the end yeah so he didn't learn from the uh, bike ride this morning still showboating I like how Rocky is doesn't want Colt to start a fight, but he'll also show off by being like, you could have nine points up. Just unleash your brother on these guys. Your brother has rage. You have hubris. Like, you both got problems. And Tum Tum has... Heartburn, probably. Heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Each ninja represents a deadly sin. Wrath uh, they originally wrote the name Tum Tum because they were going to tie it in with Tums, but they dropped out as a sponsor at the last, <laughs> at the last minute. Um, it's their version of the uh, the Game Gear endorsement. Yeah, or like the Reese's Pieces from... What can kids relate to? Antacids. <laughs> 
Are you seven? Do you deal with chronic heartburn? Um, Rocky does like a Michael Jordan dunk from the free throw line. <laughs> he's like, he's like running in the air, like for that dunk that he does, which I can buy. He does like, a with dunk having like training, like the Michael Jordan logo on the Air Jordans. <laughs> Which I like how Rocky also does the casual walk away shot over his shoulder. Oh yeah, that's right. Ain't no thing. Like, why are they ninja if they're this young and this good at basketball? Yeah, they've got a future. They could be making a lot of money in the NBA one day. Maybe they do. That's Grandpa would be so disappointed. <laughs> that that's gonna be my head cannon. After they finish up uh high noon at Mega Mountain, they're just three NBA hopefuls that get signed on. They so they they score nine points. The game is to ten. They spot them nine, and they score all the way to nine. And then Colt's about to get the last point, and <laughs> the slow motion event happens, which makes it seem like Colt's going to get his neck broken. No! The bully like essentially upends him, picks him up, he slams to the ground, and then they pick the ball up and score their one point to win the bet. Just like the way that it like it's like slow motion and Rocky's like no yeah like I expected him to be taken out and you see like the close up slow mo of the ball hitting the ground like or it'd be like Million Dollar Baby like the ball lands and his head hits the ball and like cracks his neck. <laughs> Colts paralyzed the rest of the movie um but yeah so they just lose what the I don't game. get is is he got that's that's <laughs> yeah that's that's he that's got the worst. checked real hard. And after everyone's yeah, there's no everyone's referee. congratulating the kids, and just as Colt like walks up and he's up, you could tell he's about to deck the other kid in the face. That's when <clears> the, <throat> the teacher just comes right up, right between them, blows the whistle to signal recess is over. Like, were you were you not watching <laughs> the game? <laughs> when you you saw every child on the playground run to the basketball court, and you weren't like, hey, what's going on over here? <laughs> <laughs> Quite the kerfuffle. That was not a fair basketball game whatsoever what we didn't see is after that last shot him taking the money back in from all of his uh side bets you did great guys you did great what's a piece of this action so they lose their bikes their bikes were on the line so now rocky and cole are bikeless and emily are bikeless bullies are just like rolling in bikes i don't know what they're gonna do with them all (laughs) because they just keep them they don't like sell them you know they're just like i got new bikes now they just tie them to the back of their bikes and start a convoy. <laughs> Later that night, mom's getting ready to go out with dad somewhere. I don't know where they were going, but or they're going away long enough to need a babysitter. The kids don't strike me as being that young that they would need a babysitter. But then again, with their history, yeah. I don't think it's so much. I think it's just they can't be trusted by themselves. Oh, like it's not that they can't take care of themselves, it's they just can't be trusted yeah. to their own devices. <laughs> they might kill them. They might kill a man. Um <laughs> Tum Tum gets stopped again. He's going away for good this time. <laughs> not just Juvie. Um so the babysitter shows up, which is a kind of a funny little side character. It's like an older woman with grandma style ha- her head's covered in curlers. She's got these big goofy glasses on and she just looks like a miserable person (laughs) she doesn't have any lines in the movie she just makes noises (laughs) um so she shows up mom goes upstairs to say bye colt is like in his dad's office like sitting in his chair and uh he's like where who is this guy like who's dad trying to catch and it's like mom's like yeah just just open your fbi your father's fbi case files there and like it's fine just (laughs) There he is. There's the guy that we're looking for. It's okay, Colt. They're all cold cases. <laughs> Let us know if you get any leads. So that's where the exposition Colt realizes it's a picture of Snyder and it includes uh, their grandfather, Maury. And Colt's like, oh shit, is grandpa a bad guy? So that puts the thought in their head that the grandfather has a weird history with this guy. They're like in that photo, both holding up both halves of like a best friends forever necklace. <laughs> I think Grandpa knew this guy. <laughs> Showing matching tattoos on their arm. They're both holding, like, bags of money they stole. <laughs> bags of money in one arm, one of the kids in the other arm. <laughs> we used to babysit you kids. I don't remember kids. that. <laughs> Side note, the plaid wallpaper in this house is horrifying. It reminds me of that one regular show episode where they invite the guy to 
wallpaper the house and he's like the spider that wallpapers everybody inside of it <laughs> yeah it's like a scottish like plaid yeah it's just his study though i think that has the but the rest of the house has just like 90s like patterns like random shapes <laughs> um fester and company pull up outside in their van because now that the kids are finally alone they can uh commence with operation kick butt okay dudes operation kick butt is about to commence Synchronized watches. What time is it? I don't know. Anybody got a watch? And then they kill a pizza guy. Kill a pizza guy. They come to the door as pizza delivery man and get the uh, babysitter out of the way. Who is it? Pizza man. We didn't order any pizza. Uh, some kids call. And if you don't pay, we'll, uh, we'll TP your house. I don't remember, does she have, like, look out the, the peephole or something? She does. Which she doesn't think at any point. It's weird that it's like, what pizza guy would come as a group? And just one of them in uniform. Yeah. Sorry, sir, we're, uh, we're training this kid. If you don't pay, it's part- we're going to toilet paper your house. <laughs> they extort part of our into- Big Brother's Big Sisters program at the Wayward School for Boys. <laughs> um, yeah, so they... <laughs> literally throw the pizza in her face as they open the door and stuff her in the closet and then starts pretty much my favorite like set piece of the movie which is the home alone style uh them assaulting the house and trying to get the kids and the kids defending themselves before they attack them they decide to sit down and actually eat the pizza <laughs> that they brought yeah. first and i love their line okay first we feast then we felony and i want that to be my new friday night party line from now on <laughs> Which felony do you choose? Methamphetamine production. <laughs> That's a good one. It's one of my favorites. So they go to... So Colt witnesses the assault happening on the babysitter, which I think it's like such, it was such a weird thing to see. Like, they're stuffing her face with pizza, throwing her in the closet. Like, who the fuck are these dudes? <laughs> like, why are they here? Because they have... I mean, they really at this point have no idea like what is going on. They're just like, okay, there's intruders and now we have yeah. to defend ourselves. Which I think, was it Tum Tum who his response was, let moralize them. <laughs> yeah. He desec- they desecrated pizza. Of course he's going to get mad. <laughs> Tum Tum pulls the gun out of his boot. Yeah, that triggered Tum Tum. Like, that's just like, you don't do that to pizza. But I like how when, when Colt comes into the room to tell the boys, like, hey, this is happening, when he says, like, the delivery guy just created the babysitter with the pizza. Their first instinct was like, awesome! <laughs> <laughs> but guys, they've got guns. Oh, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, we hate authority. Oh, wait. <laughs> Yeah, they're what the, it's even as kids, you think they'd think that's weird that a pizza delivery man would just throw salt to you, <laughs> salt the babysitter. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So Colt proposes, Hey, if we can take these three robbers ourselves, then maybe dad will see that our ninja training's worth it. Yes, if we kill these intruders, we'll show them that our, <laughs> our ninja powers are good and we should keep going to grandpa. So they're like. And this is when it's morphin' time. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They put on their ninja, uh, the outfits and the masks that Grandpa gave them. Each each outfit, too, is in its own dedicated drawer in one nightstand. <laughs> they they have to build their way up to, like, the Batcave. Like, this is all they got at this point. So, yeah, they decide to kill the guys that are <laughs> invading the house. Um, <laughs> they get that line that Tim referenced earlier. They're sitting there eating, and they're like... Hey, man, this kidnapping is so much better than armed robbery. Dude. Yeah, I, I never got a pizza armed robbery. Dude. I know, and it's good za, too. Hey, you know, we should save some of this for the kids we're napping. Dude. They're probably pretty nice kids. Well, they said it took me off guard, because, like, hey, these guys are pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> As they say that, then Tum Tum drops down and breaks his neck. <laughs> Fester, no. <laughs> um, so they go upstairs. Uh, they go to the boys' room. And again, they open the door and they're like, whoa, this room is cool. <laughs> um, they come up empty-handed in the boys' room because they've 
hidden uh, once they leave they the hide, room. That, they hide much better than the turtles did in both movies. No, it's about the same. When like no, they, Kino comes in or Brian comes in and finds them. Well, one of the kid was well. The first movie they hid yeah, very well. One of the uh, one of the kids hid up behind underneath the top bunk. I thought that was yeah. clever. Like if I was a little booger, where would I be? And like you see Tum Tum right above him, or uh, Rocky <laughs> or Colt right above him. Tum Tum like cuts open the mattress, climbs inside, and sews himself back in. <laughs> um, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> um. They're like, we don't have the budget. <laughs> Where would I be? Mom and dad's room. And they, all the uh, older guys go to mom and dad's room to look for them. I feel like they spend a lot of time in there. It's like, imagine them, like they, one of them finds panties or there's like a dildo. And they're like. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beginning of basketball. So they just hang out in mom and dad's room for it's, a long it's time. the international while... cut. <laughs> wow, like, I can see why Disney wanted to cut some stuff out. Um. So, they go to the next room, and then they all start preparing for phase one. I guess they have uh, several phases planned out. Colt goes to the unfinished bedroom that's being remodeled at the end of the hall. Spre yeah, Colt goes like first blood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he spray paints his mask white and turns all his suit inside out so he blends in with all of the white uh, sheets and such in the re remodeled, you know, currently being remodeled bedroom. First, I thought like isn't proceeds he, to use gorilla tactics. Isn't he gonna like pass out from the fumes? That paint is not dry. Like he's just inhaling that paint fumes because it's on his face. He slowly built up an immunity by huffing that for years. That was part of the ninja training. Like you didn't see that, <laughs> but yeah, he um he he baits the guys into following him. So they follow him in, and like they can't see shit, and he's just out. He's just in there fucking with them. Running in and smacking them, and they're it's very it's some good physical humor. They're punching each other, trying to hit Colt. They don't know where he is. Well, yeah, like it's it was honestly, it was super cool watching him, like all dressed in white in that white room, just dipping behind things and disappearing, and then like hitting them, and then like running behind stuff. If it wasn't three ninjas, that might be kind of spooky of having <laughs> him like attacking them and then disappearing again. Yeah, they're the victims there. Well, I thought originally when he ran in there that it was going to be like, oh, he has a way like that he can fit out to get back out of the room. And then it's like, oh, wait, no, there is no way out of that room. It's like they're just going to lock him in it's there. It's like, you're locked yes. in here with me. <laughs> <laughs> what um, if it's just the plan wasn't to get him back out? It was like, <laughs> thank you for your sacrifice, Colt. And then the two brothers leave. <laughs> they blow the house up like they leave the, <laughs> the gas light on. <laughs> oh, he must be cooking. <laughs> Um, I like how they see the shoe, like the feet underneath the cloth, and then they pull it, and it's just the shoe, and then he <laughs> drops like down behind them. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's a, a good scene. They um, so Colt's done fucking around with them, uh, and they get out. Tom Tom's making homemade napalm. <laughs> yeah, the elixir. They <laughs> the el <laughs> Tom Tom the alchemist. They uh, finally get out. Colt trips them because they're pulling on the door that's been uh, suddenly flung open for them. And he chases them out into the hallway, which has been covered in oil. And they come out and like, just like eat shit. And it's a pretty good prat falling here. They just keep getting up and falling down in this oil that's been coated all over the hallway. It's hard falls. They look painful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't tell that they had to be stuntmen just because unless like one of them was is a stuntman. I don't know. But um, they were falling hard, yeah. Uh, and they coated, they go down the stairs, they keep tripping on jelly beans. Um, essentially, <laughs> they keep baiting them around the house and like beating them up, like Home Alone style. Just like injury traps. They're just injury them traps. and wearing them out. Yeah. So Colt has them occupied, just beating them up. Tom Tom's in the kitchen making IEDs, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, he's got powders that he's just mixing and it's like, what is he making? Um, <laughs> Every so often he takes a handful and inhales it and goes back working. <laughs> you know, bump. Pupils of, entirely dilated. Doing a rail of cayenne pepper. Um, 
Well, the the two henchmen go downstairs yeah. while Fester is still upstairs with Rocky. That's right. Rocky's and Rocky proceeds to make a rope out of belts or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, wrap it neckties, around the guy's neck and then yeah. hangs him. <laughs> yeah. There's two separate simultaneous moments of near death by strangulation going on in this scene. <laughs> the two guys look back and they just see Fester dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> The way he, for how long he was like being asphyxiated, like he should be dead, but he was able to well, talk. Well, luckily he's so. built up immunity over time by slowly auto asphyxiating himself <laughs> over time. Yeah, things turn really deadly. Like Colt grabs the fire, like fire poker or like a the tongs like, for the fire yeah. tongs, fireplace tongs. The fire poker <laughs> versus he, the tongs are two really different the scenes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He brands him. <laughs> yeah, the poker has been sitting in the fire and he just stabs him. So call- everyone knows. Simultaneously gets him in the liver and cauterizes it at the same time. <laughs> Tell him Colt sent you. Just the Roman numeral three. <laughs> yeah. He grabs the white blonde dude by the throat and is like dragging, is like guiding him around, choking him. Like the dude literally can't breathe. Like, meanwhile, Fester is choking on the. I, for a second, I rem- I remembered watching this. Like, oh, I know, like. I remember Fester's like choking. Like, is he like, I was like, is he hanging off the balcony or is he just like, I couldn't remember how it went. I'm like, that's so brutal if he was like hanging like by his neck. <laughs> like, how fucked up would that just, have been? Just kicking his feet. <laughs> uh, the Asian Ooh. guy finds a crossbow and like shoots him down. Um, yeah, so they're they're getting choked. But like, and then Colt is about to beat their ass with the poker and they cover up and then they look and he's gone. <laughs> Again, they're impressed. He's like, radical. <laughs> like, they're like, whoa, that's awesome that he disappeared like Batman. Game recognizes game. <laughs> yeah. So they chase him to the kitchen where they we see what uh, Tum Tum was making and it's like pepper bombs. They get hit in the face, the blonde guy and the Asian guy. So they, they're blinded. It's essentially like pepper spray in their face. Well, yeah, because he puts cayenne pepper, white pepper, and I think uh, fiberglass. <laughs> <laughs> just glass shards. <laughs> he like breaks a bottle and just like mixes it up in there. Um, <laughs> so now that everybody's subdued for the time being, they like powwow in the living room and Colt pulls out the X-Lax, <laughs> dumps it in a uh, the cola. Tum Tum goes and Tricks them into drinking it, which sets it up later on. But uh, they they move on to phase two, whatever that means. So the guys go and rescue Fester, who's still like choking to death on the second floor. <laughs> and when they get to, they get to him, the guy like falls on him. Um, but I just didn't know why Fester didn't just stand up. I guess maybe because of the oil. But he's like he, he could have just stood up and untied the the, the neckties. Well, I think Rocky he's, hamstringed him. <laughs> cut his hamstring yeah. did we miss that scene <laughs> I think so he slashed his legs he slashed his Achilles tendon like he, he like pet standing. cemetery out here <laughs> um, so they the bad guys regroup uh, and they look for the weakness which they find out is bullets Emily next door oh yeah that too <laughs> wait what <laughs> well I mean I just don't get it like three three jack dudes are getting overpowered by young kids like just take out the gun put them at gunpoint and then just call it a day <laughs> that's right yeah they use they just they use the guns later as a hostage situation instead of just yeah why wasn't that step <laughs> one uh, why didn't i even realize oh, wait that? a second and then they just fire <laughs> i mean i'm sure his first weakness. bullets they, they probably figured well we're just we can overpower them. It's not a big deal. But I mean, 10 minutes into this whole thing, you would have figured, all right, just take out the gun, call it a day. I don't yeah, know. Cut your losses. I mean, they, I guess I went to a different villain school than they did. I several don't times in the movie, guns are the last resort. I'm like, no, you've got guns now. Like, and you're pulling them out later. Like, just do that. First of all, trying I mean, to prove something. The ninja at Snyder's camp used <laughs> guns first and they're ninja. <laughs> These three guys are like, no, we do this the honorable way. <laughs> we settle this the usual way. Um, Basketball. <laughs> Dance off. <laughs> um, 
There's just a quick dance off. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Fester finds the tin can communication device and come over, come to the front door of my house right away. <laughs> What's going on over there? Come over. It's important. I'll be right there. Somehow Emily believes that that's Rocky talking to him on the other side, and they say... So she gets out of bed and presumably is on the way to the house, um, and they're going to kidnap her, I guess. Uh, we get a quick little interlude of Mom and Dad, wherever they are, driving to or from, and Mom's trying to convince Dad, like, my grandfather is awesome, like, let my kids be ninjas, and Dad's like, fuck this shit. Again, not direct lines. Verbatim. Not direct lines. <laughs> International cut. <laughs> uh, and then we're back. And so Emily is taken, <laughs> which is a funny shot. <laughs> Emily is taken. <laughs> if you're looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. She comes in the door and they're like all crouched in the corner like laughing like to themselves like she can't see us <laughs> and then they're up in their dad's study i think or look they're like trying to brandish some kind of find weapons in the house and they came in with emily okay dudes party's over put that stuff down <laughs> and they, they, so they all got the revolvers out at this point like now we've got our guns well i like I don't know if we skipped the when they the surfers three they open the door and the door like swings open yeah and then immediately swings right back again. <laughs> okay, boys, yeah. we're coming in. Hey, we got a little surprise for you. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very naked gun moment. I think that literally yeah. happens in the naked gun. It's just, it's all these fun little things that it's like I didn't expect coming into this that it ended up catching me off guard and I gen I was sitting there in my hotel room just like laughing. <laughs> yeah, this is great physical comedy and and I mean the lines and the physical comedy are all pretty solid with these guys. Uh, just another that's just another example. Yeah, so they've got this hostage situation with Emily, which doesn't last long because. Hey, Fester, buddy, I'm not feeling so hot. What's wrong with you dudes? We're almost out of here. Sorry, Fester, dude. I'm gonna take a major dump, big time. Hey, hey, hey! Well, I like how they run off and then they throw their guns to Fester and then Fester's standing <laughs> there trying to hold three guns yeah, on them. He's got <laughs> one in each hand and then holding the third one in between. <laughs> like, <spread. laughs> like, that makes it, makes it worse for them. I actually feel kind of bad for them at this point. <laughs> Just because they're horribly outmatched. Like, I don't know how much they're getting paid for this, but I assume it's it's not worth it. I assume they didn't get paid in the end either. <laughs> for at least two of them, it really didn't pay in the end. <laughs> I mean, I guess they're confident, but okay, he's holding a gun, like, right with your friend. Like, you still, I mean, they, they decide, like, I'm going to take him out. It could have ended really terribly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Untouchables when uh, Andy Garcia's, you got him, I got him. <laughs> Colt just like fires one shot and takes out Fester. <laughs> no, but he kills Emily. Like that's he shoots through Emily just to get Fester. It's like whatever it takes. <laughs> and that's when Colt goes bad. Like I think that's is that the Universal Soldier movie or just Soldier or something where there's that situation where it's like there's a hostage, but it's like he just shoots through the hostage to make sure he kills the guy. Like doesn't care about her. Fester gets taken out, then they go deal with the other guys who are just finishing shitting. They're st still having their Harry Dunn moments. Um, Tum Tum takes one out with a boar head. Not with a beer. You mean a sandwich? Oh wait, it's not beer. Shit. And I not with a deli meat. I just fucked that joke up. Damn it. Okay, cut. Places. <laughs> Take two. So, so Tum Tum takes care of the one guy with the boar's head. You mean the sandwich? Not the deli meat. <laughs> and the other Which guy I, oh yeah i like how colt i think it's colt goes after the other one and he's beating the guy up and he does oh, uh, not the stomach not the stomach <laughs> thanks <laughs> yeah that, it was a little cartoony there but it was still funny that's why i felt bad for them <laughs> yeah because he they are kind of endearing by the end like you just want to see more of these guys like i want to see them in their own movie 
Yeah, that like under other circumstances, they would not be doing this. Right. They just, if they would have stayed at school and known that it ended at three o'clock, their lives could have just ended so much differently. If only they had a school that they can go to. <laughs> for their wayward for, personalities. For their way- <laughs> uh, so they finish the dudes. They realize the babysitter's still shivering, scared in the closet. Um, she just kind of makes whimpering noises. Uh, I'm really sorry about all this, ma'am. Are you okay? <laughs> I'll go get the napkin. I hope you saved some pizza for us! Rushmore, presumably, right? Big Japanese muscle shows up I behind them. I so. Mr. Brown and company, they take them. Which I like how, like, Rushmore, like Professor Tanaka, shows up, and Colt's first response is just like, I could take this guy. <laughs> <laughs> then he just breaks his back like Bane. <laughs> Colt spends the rest of the movie like doing rehab, getting ready for the rematch. He's already got paralyzed in the basketball game. <laughs> Colt is just the punching bag of the script for some reason. <laughs> um, so then we cut and it's just, you know, mom and dad are home. The boys are obviously gone. Emily just shows up very quickly and... She gets in, she ducks out, she gives a mom a note. Miss Texas, I know where the boys are. I was told to give this to you. Emily! Mom's like, Emily, wait, like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then like, she throws a pellet on the ground and disappears. <laughs> <laughs> the boys showed me this before they were taken. Um, <laughs> like, why couldn't, I, like, why couldn't Emily just tell her what happened? Like, I, I, that part I was just, like, confused. Like, were they threatening the her family didn't somehow? Tell her. I don't know. It was, don't open this note. Give it to my mother and leave. <laughs> but, I mean, Emily was kidnapped and saw what some of what happened. So, she could have like, explained, like, yeah, these guys. But she's just like, nope, here's this note. Bye. Oh, yeah. So, what would they have put in the note that she wasn't aware of there? <laughs> right. We know what you are. Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just Ninja kill yourself, werewolf. Mom? Oh, I God. love Grandpa's entrance to this scene, though, because yeah. you're surrounded by FBI agents, and it's a typical like copter to the rescue sort of thing. And then you just see that silhouette of a ninja in the middle of the street, with like even the smoke going across the camera and it obscuring it to be the most epic thing in the world. It was <laughs> cool. And then I like how I think it was the father and he's like, we don't have time for ninja games. And all I can think of is, oh, yes, we do. <laughs> that is all I have time I for. Like, That's got to be a pop song, ninja games. I, uh, <laughs> I thought it'd be funny. Like, <laughs> we see it's grandpa, but nobody knows. And like dad realizes and it's like, he's got a gun. Take him out. Like he just wants grandpa out of the picture. <laughs> he just opened fire. On- <laughs> he's coming right for us. <laughs> So, yeah, Grandpa shows up and convinces Dad to let him, you know, give me one hour head start. Let me get in there. I'm a ninja. They're not going to know I'm coming. And uh, we both love our boys, so let me let me do this. So, that's how uh, Grandpa gets a head start to uh, board the ship. Well, then he Batmans the father. <laughs> yeah, the dad, does. like, looks away and he looks back and he's gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then you hear like feet running and then it, the camera pulls out just a little bit and you see him like running into the distance. He's like, oh, I saw you. Didn't work. I saw where you went. Um, so we cut. The boys are getting loaded onto the ship. Um, uh, we see them walking around. They, uh, we see Snyder. I don't know if it's Snyder doing the training because we don't see him, but his whole... He has the Foot Clan essentially training on the it's ship. It's like Foot Clan night school. Yeah, exactly. Which I like how they see all the ninja with all of these machine guns. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, that's a lot of ninja. If they have guns, they're no ninja. <laughs> <laughs> we realized Grandpa was Snyder's teacher. Because they're like, this fighting style looks familiar. And Mr. Brown's like, yeah, because your fucking grandfather trained my boss. And it's funny they recognize that training, yet they still whoop their asses. Like, those those guys are not good <laughs> at being ninja. <laughs> Does this fighting style look familiar? It's like, yeah, it's what we learned in the first week. <laughs> um, Grandpa, meanwhile, Grandpa is 
I mean, he's like Metal Gear soliding his way through that entire boat. <laughs> yeah. It's like the opening to Sons of Liberty. Metal Gear. Metal Gear. Metal Gear. So he climbs one of the docking uh, ropes leading up to the ship and uh, takes out another guard up there. Then we get the boys are in a cell. And I'm pretty sure the guard outside is wearing like a hockey mask, like a goalie mask. <laughs> Lord humongous. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Just walk away. Give me a pump. Just walk away. And there will be an end to the horror. Just walk away. <laughs> the first thing that came to mind is like, why is, why is Lord Humongous tasked with watching their cell? You got demoted. Just walk away. <laughs> so at this point, you know, we get the scene with Rocky and Colt. And uh, Colt's pretty convinced that Grandpa is... A bad guy while Rocky's like, no, he's just a ninja. Rocky, you must have been hit in the head too many times because Grandpa is one of them. He's a ninja. Grandpa will come. I don't care who he is as long as you bring something to eat. Would you guys get a clue? Grandpa isn't coming. He sold us out. So we get some sarca sarcastic comments and they realize there's a phone in the room. So they, Rocky decides to use that to get the guard's attention <laughs> well like, i like how i think it was rocky that was like there has to be like get calm there's gonna be a way out of this and colt was mocking him he's like we gonna go make the friendly door open hey mr door how you doing will you be my friend and open up for me i guess we're all out of friends in this room <laughs> in the uh imdb notes it said that that was one of the like that was too sarcastic, I guess, for Disney. Like they cut that out of the movie. I will never remember without seeing the original cut, but like it was like sarcastic comments removed in the cell scene. So like I don't know why that uh, thought that would have a bad effect on kids. Like that would. I mean, push it's it the only time I think the brothers really disagree. But and even then, it's like it's not much. And that's like a really genuine. That's like yeah, of course, your brother would be. Like saying that kind of shit to you and like, yeah, sarcastic like that's comments. a Raph and Leo line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they trick this guard. They call the guard operator system. <laughs> he picks up the phone and it's like, <laughs> shh. Hello, security. Uh, yeah, I'm in the kid's cell. Can you call me back? I want to test out the phone. And then he gets the guard's attention and is like, phone's for you. So the guard opens the door and he beats him in the, over the head with the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like how the operator's like, Frank? That you? <laughs> Hello? This is a phone check. Is that you, Frank? Yes, it's me. I'm the guard. Um, <laughs> everything's good here. I see that uh, Grandpa doesn't teach them quips because his quip here was not not good. Frankie, you there, Frank? I'm sorry, he's... Sorry, he's... I was like, wait, what's he gonna say? I'm sorry, he's... out. <laughs> <laughs> dead. Like, damn it come on he's dead <laughs> sorry he's dead well, there could have been a better one-liner here <laughs> so then it's kind of like a back and forth sequence uh for the next couple minutes of grandpa's continuing his way through killing guards and the boys are now outside of the room like doing the same well, like, I think it's Mr. Brown. It cuts to him and he's just like saying a prayer to the universe. Of, please let me catch them. Pretty please let me catch them. Yeah, because earlier Snyder threatens him like, if you don't do this, I'll rip out your heart. And then here he just says, I want them found now or I'll tear out your liver. The boys knock out a guard and beat up several others with like fish hooks or something or tire irons. I don't know what they're wielding. Well, I think they, they end up hiding or something and the ninja ends up finding Tum Tum and he just like normal voice just says, <laughs> okay, little guy, you're coming. What a nice guy. <laughs> I thought that was funny too. <laughs> you just like pick the wrong job kind of guy. Like, ah, you don't deserve to die. I actually applied to be working on the garbage truck over in Santa Monica, but <laughs> they didn't have a room for another guy. I love how it's almost like uh, that one ninja comes to them with the nunchucks. And they're all like, oh, a feller chucker, eh? And uh, makeshift <laughs> Colt rips a pipe out of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's like He's got to... Uh, Pulls the wires out. He's got Corey Haim and silver bullet strength. Just like rips. 
<laughs> rips the pipe out of the wall. They all make makeshift nunchucks out of whatever they find. They're all wielding these metal Which they're pretty good chain with it. nunchucks. Yeah. Yeah, they're and they're again, this is like them like there's not stunt doubles. They're they learned some kind of moves with these uh, nunchucks and they're doing them yeah, on the camera. Like, later when they're fighting with it, you can see it's like less impressive because it seems like they're trying to focus more on being able to pull it off without actually hurting somebody. But when it's just them flipping nunchucks around, it's like these kids are pretty good. Better than the uh, the other ninja. <laughs> Again, in the notes, that was one of the things that was removed. Nunchucks are a big problem, I think. Like I know in California, since the 70s, it has been illegal to own nunchucks. Like, it's still illegal you know, to have nunchucks. I think, it's, I think it's funny considering... I also think they're the dumbest martial art weapon. <laughs> Hot take. Because it, it's, it takes great skill not to hurt yourself with it. And I fully get that. <laughs> But when you strike someone with it, the momentum is going to not make it swing anymore. So, I don't know. I've never... <laughs> because it's been outlawed, I never got to see them with their full potential. Maybe it's just <laughs> too hot for TV, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, it's it, it's not something like a bat or something like that. It's, you need to get momentum with it, and then the momentum stops... Maybe I just don't understand nunchucks. I like how this ninja I mean, they're fighting, though, is like whipping it around and he's hitting the two guys behind <laughs> yeah. him by accident. <laughs> that was funny. I mean, I guess with the nunchuck, it's, it's, that's maybe that's the drawback. If your shot is blocked, what would you say in like a fighting game? I don't know. It's like a count, um, frames, like how many frames does it take for you to recover? <laughs> like you have to then wind up again. So that's maybe just a drawback. You better make sure you land your blow. To disorient your opponent with your nunchucks because they have a reset time. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the get- a cool down a nunchuck. <laughs> so yeah, the guy wielding the nunchucks knocks out his friends, and then I guess they just they beat him up with the nunchucks. Um, and then <laughs> this for whatever reason, there's a face painted ninja that makes an appearance <laughs> wielding a katana, and like, he's like, it does a close guy? up. And he looks like a ghost of Shusi, or Shusi, um, what's the name of that game? Uh, Tush- uh Tushima. Tsushima. Yeah. Tsushima. <laughs> but he's like licking his blade. Yeah. It'd be funny if it was covered in blood, like he had just killed somebody else. Like he's licking the blade. Like <laughs> that would have been intimidating. The camera pans down and grandpa's there. <laughs> For on the, on the long shot, since his face was painted and the shot was like oh, far away, I'm like, is that? Here, Yuki Sonata, like, in an early role. Um, I was like, oh, it, once it got closer, I realized it wasn't him. Um, but I was like, that would have been badass if they just randomly, it was here, Yuki Sonata, um, who you rem- who most people would remember if they saw them. They would know who he was. He's Scorpion in the new Mortal Kombat, just for quick reference. What if but- he wasn't one of Snyder's henchmen? <laughs> he just also happens to be on that boat. He's, he saw them in the docks and just like, ah, it's going to be some action here. <laughs> yeah, Snyder sees him like, who the fuck is this? Did you they hire brought him? four guys. He's not with us. He's not with me. <laughs> Everybody just slowly backs away. I thought it'd be funny here. Colt gets the katana from him and starts doing a Zorro, like, starts slashing his clothes. But I just thought, like, what if he was... Ch- and the guy's like, you know, like wincing and turning around and like, oh, and like what if he was actually just cutting him the hell up, like just <laughs> slicing him and slicing him. And he just cuts back and all of a sudden he just falls down in pieces. It's like that one guy in Resident Evil in the hallway. Right. Cube stakes. Tum Tum's just like, Jesus Christ, Cole, what are you, <laughs> Colt, what are you, Colt, stop, stop, Colt. The best part is right after this. They're escaping through a, a hallway. They get stopped by another ninja. And then a knife zooms past them. And it lands directly into the guy's heart. And then oh, they, he's dead. they turn around and they realize, <laughs> oh, it's Grandpa. They saved him. And they're like, Grandpa. But I'm thinking, holy shit, he just killed a guy. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. Think of the severity of what Dude, just this happened. is a kid's movie. <laughs> nah, he's just tuckered out. Poor guy. Speaking of, of that for that moment... Like, oh, Grandpa! And Colt's like, wait. Grandpa! Hold it! He's friends with that Snyder guy. Grandpa, please! 
Please, it's just us. Don't do it, Grandpa, no. How great would it have been if Grandpa turns heel yeah. in this moment and you find That's... out like, Nope, they were right. Grandpa's one of the villains. It's a callback to like the basketball scene and Grandpa throws the knife and right into Colt's heart. <laughs> Rocky's right. like, no. <laughs> Grandpa, why? Um, so they're reunited and just like earlier in the movie, Grandpa's like, get the hell out of here. And I guess the boys do try to leave, but they just end up in the training room and get, there's another fight scene here. Uh, Colt is always ready for a rumble. He is. Like, is... every time another challenger shows up, Colt immediately goes into, like, a fighting stance. You know where he is. <laughs> he's not stupid. Like, he's ready to, like, walk out with his life. <laughs> Can't trust anybody here. It's like the Hulk. Like, he has to be always, he's always on. He's, like, ready to go. But then, yeah, the boys, it's it's kind of like, this is definitely the most cartoonish fight of the movie. Like, there's the most, the goofiest stuff going on when they fight these guys in the uh, no. training. Are you talking about the two synchronized dance ninja <laughs> doing their best Ginyu force from Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> it's Shen Yun. It's a great show they put on here. Because um, <laughs> I remember at one point, Tum Tum, like, tries to bite through the guy's wrist guard. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy ends up like George of the Jungling himself into a wall. <laughs> yes. And that's, yeah, that was another one. It's like, this is a cartoony part of the movie. Rocky does like a, not a, a sure you can like uppercut on one of the dudes. He like fucks him up. Perfect. It's like Scorpion, throw the spear, pull him in kind of uppercut. Um, <laughs> and they do their synchronized dance. It's just so strange. They do like a dance. It's like almost like a kata or something. And then they start attacking. But it's just so goofy. And Rocky just I want to see Rocky and Colt them. match it. <laughs> they could have done like an Indiana Jones thing where they just... Rocky pulls out a gun and shoots them. <laughs> um, they try to leave and then it's Mount Rushmore back for his... Uh, actual fight scene with the kids he comes in towering and then um it's a uh, it's mimics the they go back to their training from the beginning of the movie with the light up dummy which rocky says let's rock this chump <laughs> <laughs> never or colt says that never change colt <laughs> let's fuck this dude up verbatim international version yeah so Tum Tum just goes up and just keeps kicking him in the nuts, and that's how they beat Rushmore. Oh, that hurts my parts! <laughs> <laughs> Tum Tum uh, keeps hitting them, they get him to the edge of the ship, and then Rocky says, this is where you fall down. <laughs> Why don't you just kill yourself, Rushmore? You're not getting out of here. <laughs> he tr transforms into a werewolf. <laughs> this movie, who... <laughs> How did they not find this earlier? <laughs> um, yeah, so they uh, they beat up Rushmore by hitting him in all the pressure points, and like it keeps cutting. It's a kind of effective <laughs> yeah, the way they keep cutting to the dummy, like lighting up. It's it's effective, but I had to like it was hilarious to me because it keeps cutting to like this clown dummy face with the eyes lighting up every time he's getting hit. <laughs> how they beat the sensors it's not child violence they're just attacking a dummy yeah they cut out the two minute sequence after he's already down tum tum just keeps hitting him in the nuts <laughs> let hiya, me hiya, die hiya, hiya. <laughs> <laughs> bites a cyanide capsule cuts to rush more the doctor's like you cannot have children anymore <laughs> um your line ends with you <laughs> So they finish the fight and I like how immediately after you hear like the click of a firing line and then you see all the ninja lined up with guns. Ah, I see the Colonel Chi school of ninja. It's caught. What is with revolvers? Like six shot revolvers. Like every, like that's what everybody uses. I don't know. There's, but it's so good. There's 12 ninjas. They beat Rushmore. Yeah. They, everybody has a six shot revolver, a black revolver they take out. What if they're there to do it as like an honor thing? They just aim in the air and do a 21 gun salute for Rushmore. 
and then oh, grandpa, captain, my captain and grandpa falls out of the ceiling dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit um followed by bulk and skull with the undeployed shoe <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is an open this is an open air uh, training facility so that's that's possible they could land in here um snyder shows up at that point very nice old man you taught them young ones well well, Snyder challenges Grandpa to a duel and says if he wins, he'll let his family go. Yes, Grandpa. Which, all considering, I don't know if that would... Actually, no, never mind. He already proved me wrong. He'd be like, I feel like Snyder overall would probably be true to his word. Then I remember the end of the movie, I'm like, oh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Does not take losing. Yeah, so they challenge each other to a death match, essentially. Colt, they have a little powwow. It's funny, he's like... May I speak to my family before I fight? <laughs> Certainly. So Tum Tum slips some jelly beans into, uh, I mean, he doesn't, not unknowingly, he gives him the jelly beans. <laughs> yeah, not like he doesn't like palm it to him, like performance enhancing jelly beans. It would be funny later on, like he just reaches in his pocket, like, what the fuck did these jelly beans come from? <laughs> um, it doesn't come up in the fight at all, but then the end of the movie, Grandpa's sitting there and he just eats a couple jelly what beans. What were these for? Um, that his pupils dilate. Yeah, so everybody stands by while Maury and Snyder have their fight. It's a pretty good fight. There's lots of grandpa stunt doubling going on, but Yeah. It reminded me of like Yoda versus Count Dooku with Yamada. Yeah. I had Yoda vibes here for sure. Well, it's fun that they keep doing like all of those high shots and wide angles so you can actually like get a feel for the fight and the area they're doing it in. Yes. It, like it's nice to actually see a fight where they have a little fun and like take pride in their choreography rather than all of those like shaky cam close up fast cuts where you yes. can't see the actual duel. Yes. One thing I noticed too, the gi that um, Snyder's wearing looks like shredders. Yeah. Ah, the red. Yeah, it's a great point. Damn it. Just another tally on the point of like, this is like a, a turtles like a homage. So yeah, it's a pretty good fight. I think Snyder does. Looks like, I mean, you could probably find tall guys with ponytails that look like Snyder, but it, I feel like he does. Looks like he does a lot of the movements here. <laughs> At one point, Grandpa tries to take out, unsheath his katana, and like Snyder kicks it back in. Like, oh, Grandpa was going for the kill, <laughs> like pretty early on. <laughs> I thought that was a cool move, though, considering what it is. I was actually pretty impressed by the martial arts. Yeah, when he tosses yeah. a knife or something and, and like, uh, yeah, Snyder does that back handspring to dodge it. That was pretty badass. Just good at the base. If he's like, it's like, Snyder is definitely like a Dark Souls player in this fight. Like, just like rolling, <laughs> rolling. <laughs> um, it's pretty good. Just like over encumbered rolls. <laughs> <laughs> just like slow tumbles. So. Grandpa has Snyder beat, but then, like, once again, pocket sand. <laughs> I mean, I guess as Tum Tum says, uh, it's like a pepper ball or something. And uh, Grandpa is blinded and is, like, swinging wildly like a uh, Van Damme in Bloodsport. Can't find him. <laughs> but then the kids start, like, sending their energy to him. Like, uh, yeah. Like, it's going to be a spirit bomb. He starts beating his ass and they're watching. They think their grandpa's about to die. And they're like, no, let him alone. Yeah, and they do that little prayer that like uh it almost it almost looks like they're saying goodbye like <laughs> it's been an honor like they are like saying an honor like a soul prayer <laughs> Snyder gets caught monologuing and um grandpa stuffs the jelly beans right in his mouth and distracts him and it's just enough to turn the tide turns the tide he gets him in the he got he's got the kill move it's kind of like the karate kid too where he's got like he's got him beat he's ready to like chop his head off but he's like oh my kids are watching i can't kill these <laughs> he looks back at the three kids and then all of a sudden he looks back and just takes his head clean off <laughs> Terry's just i was all, like i wanted him to tear his throat out like uh roadhouse you all work for me now <laughs> dad shows up he kills them like orders them to kill all the fbi agents <laughs> my plan all along boys you're gonna be great criminals you need to take down your grandfather we have to go to mega mountain oh my god that would have been a great sequel what a turn of events that would have been if grandpa was the enemy dark. in the sequel holy shit 
So it doesn't end like that. Uh, he spares Snyder's <laughs> but this is life. How it could have ended. <laughs> yeah, we need some clue endings to this movie. Um, so he spares Snyder's life, but of course Snyder doesn't accept that. Runs and grabs a M16 from one of his subordinates, and then uh, I never lose. Tone Loke shoots. No. <laughs> Tone Loke shows up. I wish. I wish. <clears throat> FBI is surrounded and comes and shoots Snyder in the arm. I assume he lives through that. I don't Between think they punctured the a lung. <laughs> he just saw like, boom, like a cloud of blood just by his head. Just like, oh my God. It just cuts. You see the three kids and it just spatters. <laughs> They're like hugging and like his body's next on the pool. Blood is pulling like everywhere. <laughs> Which I originally, until you mentioned it in this episode, I forgot that Grandpa asked for an hour head start. I thought they left at the same time. And when they oh. showed up, I was like, what route did they take? <laughs> it cuts. They're just like in tra- just like stuck on the interstate. <laughs> um, so the day is saved and dad is now cool with ninjas and ninja training. And sure, you can go see your grandfather and let's all get pizza. And the kids are like, yay. Well, they're guiding all the the ninja crew off of the boat, and all of them are like unmasked. And it's like, wow, there's a lot of middle aged like white oh, really? ninja dudes I in this group. That. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most of them just look like they would be hanging out with like Danny Aiello. All of these guys that just look like, huh? Not what I would expect it. I was gonna. Oh yeah, I guess like what is like midlife crisis? Is ninja becoming ninja part of like a midlife crisis? Is <laughs> that either this or convertible? About? Yeah, that's right. I'm watching that shot again. They all got like 45 year old faces. <laughs> <laughs> they really took a bad path in life. From the uh, Franco Nero school of <laughs> ninja, I guess. <laughs> so dad offers pizza and it's like, yeah, like pizza is like, I could be in any bad situation or like feeling bad. And it's like, do you want pizza? I'm like, oh, that would cure everything right now. <laughs> they just put it on Snyder's shoulder. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. I've heard this works. Um, like, which like, that work? I like how America got it. There were pizza party ideas from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you did something great, pizza party. <laughs> you just stopped a crime lord, pizza party. <laughs> well, I like how he's like, "We're gonna get pizza," and then his partner is like, "We have a lot of stuff to do. Do it yourself. I'm taking my family for pizza." No, you're an FBI agent in charge of this mission. Why are you just being like, I don't think that's allowed. They really didn't like, I think in that moment they could have shown some more sympathy or something from the, yeah, his partner. Cause was, they just left his partner. Like we got shit to do. And like they cut away and it's like, you could have softened that up a little bit. Like, ah, <laughs> it gets I know to another shot with- and he's talking with the family. And then all of a sudden the partner's still walking in from the scene before. <laughs> no, but Sam, no, what but, are you like, doing? <laughs> Sam, I'm not joking. <laughs> yeah, it just it's I guess that guy didn't really get any characterization. He just had like two lines and like two scenes, so. And then also like grandpa's getting treated for his wounds and whatnot, and it's we're doing a pizza party, and grandpa's like, eh, and like drags his old bones out. Yeah, he does say like I hate he does say he hates pizza. <laughs> so it's the worst end for his day. But uh then Yeah, again, according to internet lore, we get the scouring of the Shire scene where the hobbits return to the Shire and kill Saruman. That was not in the movies. Here, this wasn't... And then get their bike back? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Saruman takes their bike when they're at Isengard and they finally get it back. When Frodo faces him as a uh, a (laughs) two-on-two, Saruman and uh, Saruman or whatever. (laughs) It was a soccer game, though, at that point. Because it's um, what? It's Saruman and... Sauron. There's... Oh, and you Sauron, mean, oh, okay. As far as... Saruman and Sauron. I, mean, I was going to say, they, I remember they always sound like a law firm. Yeah. <laughs> so, we cut back. You know, they've saved the day. This is just... So, it's just like a button scene, epilogue scene, where... The bullies, again, try to take the uh, bikes from the kids. Nice bikes. I think it's time we teach you jerks a lesson. Look, 
We don't want to fight you. Why don't you just stand aside and give us our bikes so nobody gets hurt? I feel like this should have been Colt. They really robbed Colt of his moment here. Yeah. Because he was the one who was trying to let loose on these kids like the whole time. Instead, they give it to Rocky, which I thought was Because it's his girlfriend's bike. That's true. That's all it was. I mean, and it got that's a taken because she kept saying, like, you were showing off. Then he right. gives them the nine point lead and, like, you're showing off. And now is his chance. And she's like, show off. I, I see your point. I raise you. And that's you. why Rocky punched the kid in the throat and just killed him right there. <laughs> hits, his, hits his nose bone into his brain. <laughs> oh, God, Rocky, you need to lay low. He was low. dead before he hit the ground. Um, I know this farm. I... <laughs> <laughs> we can take this minivan, minibus to get there. It says die yuppie scum. <laughs> <laughs> there's the, the one main bully, but then there's like the other guy that's with him. It's like you could have had Rocky and Colt fight them. Like give, give Colt some fighting action here. Yeah. Do like the case. two on two from the basketball game, but now here. Right. Yeah, exactly. Why didn't we write the end of this movie? Or it should have been just to show that bad things do happen. They start this, and then the bullies beat them up, and then take their stuff again. <laughs> and then it ends with the three brothers laying there. It's like, Wondering no matter what you do, somebody out there, there's always a bigger fish. Can't beat City Hall. Our grandfather taught us Taekwondo. <laughs> <laughs> the natural enemy of ninjutsu. Yeah, so the bullies get their comeuppance here. Um, after they try to take the bikes again. I mean, there's only one bike at this point, right? Like, it's just Tum Tum. <laughs> so they're after the last bike. And uh, it's funny, the, the, meet, the lead bully says, we're going to have to teach you a lesson. Like, for doing what? Like, for just going to school? Like, what is what are they doing? <laughs> we hate education. <laughs> yeah, so um, Rocky gets the approval from Emily. Like, go ahead, show off. And uh, Rocky kicks the uh, bully's ass. And the, everybody else runs off scared. It's, it's like in 300 when Leonidas looks over his shoulder and his wife gives him like the approval nod. <laughs> yeah. The bullies leave all their bikes and just run, I think, right? Do, or do they leave just the bikes they stole? I feel like they just leave all of their belongings and like, it's yours now. <laughs> <laughs> Take what you want. Their shoes, their wallets, <laughs> everything. And uh, yeah, roll credits and another TMNT parallel. We get a rap song rap. at the end. Yeah. I mean that you could argue that one's just the nineties, like that's a nineties thing just to have a hip hop song at the end of the movie, but it's very TMNT. Well also, isn't the end song something like Kid Power? Oh, that's a good point. Power. Power the kids power. Kid power. Oh damn. I love all before that, I love all the reaction shots of the bully's friends. Like, he's getting his ass kicked, and all the bullies are like, Oh my god, you're gonna kill him. <laughs> they do a close up on the second in command, and you just see like blood spatter hit his face. <laughs> oh god. It's like the scene in a Christmas story, except just more brutal. <laughs> yeah, so the, I'm gonna tell my on dad. the soundtrack, the song is listed as Kid Power by Will Rock. Wow. I mean, it was one step away from K-I-D, K-I-E-D, hey, power. I mean, this movie, I still enjoy this movie, and, you know. Oh, a thousand Imitation, percent. greatest form of flattery and such. So I'm fine with it. I mean, there's a great Two formula to copy, why there. not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I enjoyed this movie. Thank you very much, Dean, for introducing this movie to me. I had a blast. Nick and I have known for a long time that... I, I mean... I hadn't seen this probably since I was a kid and having watched several you know movies for kids since we started doing this I'm like oh this is like a really solid entry and like just I mean it's got it's silly simplistic kind of moments and stuff but it's overall like it's nobody's phoning it in like everybody's doing a really good job yeah there weren't that many eye roll moments no that yeah. I would expect from a kids movie like this right like I we're we're Jurassic Park fans and watching Camp Cretaceous, it's bad sometimes. And it's yeah. I, I know it's meant for kids, and that's the only reason that it gets me from the first episode to the last. And I'm only in it for any of the little tidbits of lore they can throw our you know, the bones that they can throw our way. But the whole rest of it is like fucking brutal to watch. Yeah. 
not to devolve into a whole discussion about that show, but I no, think the most, well, it's the most recent, it's the most recent thing I can think of that I have actively watched that's meant for kids. Oh no. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I was just, I, I was saying for myself, I was going to say like, I think that oh, you want, the, you want to talk about it? the, um, when what's his name ben that whole episode with ben like becoming learning how to live in the wild was like the best episode of the whole show i think <laughs> like just because it was actually that whole show is a formula of just is there a dinosaur attacking there is and then they think they're safe but no he pops out and then wins repeat that's that entire show um so i'm agreeing with you but i was like oh i don't want to devolve into a whole discussion on <laughs> cretaceous but and with the sense of peril that is non-existent like, you know, none of the kids are going to get hurt. Yeah. In this movie, I felt there were a couple of times where, like, shit, something might actually happen. <laughs> but then it, it goes a complete 180 because you think, like, oh, maybe these robbers will do something to the kids. And then, no, they completely underestimated them. Or even not necessarily a sense of, like, something's going to happen to the kids. Like, they're going to actually kill them. But it's like, are the kids going to lose this fight and get captured and somebody else will have to come help them? It happens a couple times. And they actually get... <laughs> They get that. They get captured once. I'll just in- insert a, a punch down there instead. <laughs> and they get... I think if anybody listening out there has kids, um, show them this movie. It's a good kids movie. I mean, our parents did. That's true. No, I just mean as far as like content. Uh, like, hey, do you want something to watch with your kids? Like, this is... You'll enjoy this too. Like, I mean... Also, as somebody without kids at my age seeing this for the first time, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. That's great to hear. We'll have to call up uh, Fester and tell him, like, great job. He did great. I think on his IMDb, he's the only one I saw that had, like, an extensive, like, some roles after this, I think. As far as uh, that crew of people, the, the, yeah. the, the Stooges, he, like, appeared in a lot of stuff. So do we have any final thoughts on the 90s classic, Three Ninjas? Well, you heard mine, I guess. Check it out now with your kids. Don't show them. Light frozen. up the eyes, boys. Light up the eyes. <laughs> Watch the international cut. It's where they keep all the racy violence. Light up the eyes, boys. That's what grandpa means. Kick him in the nuts over and over again. <laughs> I remember that from Mortal Kombat when Liu Kang looks at Johnny and says, light up the eyes. <laughs> Goro's like, uh-oh. And Goro's like, that means nothing to me. I wasn't there for the flashback. <laughs> As Johnny just lays into him and it just shows Goro's face intercut with the doll. Uh, so anyway, so that wraps up another episode of Screen Refresh. Again, if anybody is wants to... Chime in on the things that they remember about Three Ninjas, just your thoughts, any of the movies that you feel that you want to see covered or some of your favorite memories. Let us know at Screen Refresh on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, or shoot an email to ScreenRefresh at gmail.com. Just to give us a shout. I don't know. Um, I know we had a listener recently reach out saying it would be a cool idea if somebody did Three Ninjas, and that was before we recorded the the episode but was already on the docket as our next one so this one's for you bud <laughs> we should call him by name it's matt uh, i wouldn't give it the last name oh that's true yeah it's just matt <laughs> give us a dress while you're at it <laughs> we just dox we dox him on air <laughs> uh it says his birthday uh he lives in springfield ohio <laughs> so matt this one's for you bud you're our bud now, Matt. You're you're our bud now. You're our fourth ninja. So I'm still Tum Tum. So again, reach out to us on Facebook Screen Refresh or reach us at any of the other ones. Again, this is Jim for Nick and Dean. Have a refreshed screen. Goodbye. We need a we need a an outro. <laughs> just just cut this up however it works. <laughs> yeah.